Welcome to T-Bone Speaks with Dr. Tarun Agarwal, where our goal is to change the way you practice dentistry by helping you achieve clinical, financial, and personal balance. Now, here's your host, T-Bone. On this episode of T-Bone Speaks, we have another flashback episode for you where T-Bone was interviewed by the dental guys. Enjoy. Well, this is Wes, the dental guy, and it's good to have Tarun Agarwal with us. And many of you know him as T-Bone, and he has a dental podcast and uh, many things, really. And I guess the first time John and I probably knew about T-Bone was from Dentaltown. Yeah. How long were you? How? I mean, like... I've so I joined of- Dentaltown in 2000. 2000- 99 2000 okay. Man. Yeah. as a uh, subscriber yeah. I mean, it was like we're probably one of the first hundred people on right and then we started and Samir and I started the meeting for them in um, 2002 right and right. we ran that till 2012 yeah so it was a lot of fun super yeah, and you know, good times. and and that has given way to you know speaking at the meetings, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. You've had a lot of that over the years on different topics, and we've kind of followed that. And you know that that really maybe leads us right into what one of the things we want to talk to you. And you've probably been asked this question a five times. thousand times right. because we sure. see the we see the uh, you know the topic of the townie meeting, and it's you know stop doing fillings and crowns, right? Yeah. So what happened to? your practice over the years that you kind of felt like it was time yeah. to start making that kind of change. Why are you an yeah. ambassador for this? Well, yeah. so, you know, the truth is I haven't got there completely yet, okay? But you have to set wild, crazy goals. You have yeah. to be ambitious to even achieve 90% or 80% of it, okay? So my goal, I know I've said in the past that my goal for 2017 was not to do any fillings whatsoever. Yeah. No, truthfully, that's almost impossible because if I'm doing a quadrant of crowns, let's say, and there's a feeling that needs to be done, you're going to have to do it, right? So the real goal is actually to have only one patient per day that contains feelings for me. Okay. Okay, and my thing with feelings is not that they're bad or not fun to do. I mean, they're kind of mundane and boring, but um, is that they're low productivity. And so for me, I, I want to raise my bar to a point where I'm not doing anything that's low productivity. And the other side of it is it's also something that is totally dentist dependent. In other words, you know, and I can't imagine there's any state that doesn't require the dentist to prep the tooth and all of that. So even if you have an EFTA and they can do the filling, you still have to go in there and do the prep and all of that. And quite honestly, most dentists are control freaks by nature. So I can't imagine that they really want to turn over the filling of the restoration. Right. right. So, so yeah. will, will that ever work? I mean, what? Not seeing, not doing any fillings. Well, well, I mean, well, I'm saying no, no, like, like uh, turning it over to to like, EFTAs because like you, you know that's like a, even the prep. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. I mean, well, or even just filling. I mean, even what do you think about? You think about EFTAs doing uh, composites? You know, sure. doing, yeah. You good with it? I'm okay with it. Yeah. I think uh, highly anybody can be trained to do it. I, I think. Look, I, and I'm not trying to say. Look, some people are going to take this the wrong way. But I think at the end of the day, if you're a dentist that only does restorative dentistry, you're a mechanic. Mm. And I don't think you need all the education that we've gone through. I don't think you need the grades that we've had to achieve to even get into dental school. So there's a difference what you're saying between a doctor and a technician, and you want to be the doctor. Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I, at the end of the day, I think if you're doing fillings and crowns, you're, you're, you're a mechanic, okay? You're finding yeah. holes, you're filling it. So is this mentality, though, driven by, like, the idea that... You know, there's some people out here that say that we're diluting our profession. Diluting or diluting? Diluting. Yeah. Yeah. So basically... That's already happened and started. So what are you going to do about it? Well, I I know, but that's that's the thing is that we... You know, I don't well, know. and a lot of it's just commoditizing. You know, that's sure. one of the ideas. But is that it is. It's a, it, and it already is there. Yeah. Uh, it's already so there. Well, what are we supposed to so, do? Not, so, well, not but, embrace it? Well, but what you're doing is you're saying, well, okay, it is a commodity. You've embr- you've kind of embraced it. You said, so I'm going to move past that. Look, 80% of what we do is a commodity, okay? There are those of us that can build a practice based on our personality, based on our brand, based on specific skill sets that we have. But generally speaking, a dentist is a dentist is a dentist. And whether we believe that or not as a profession is irrelevant. In the consumer's mind, that's what they believe. Yeah. You know, and it's insurance McDonald's. has been part of that. Well, I don't know if it's McDonald's necessarily. We held in higher esteem than that, at least. Sure. Okay, but uh, but at the end of the day, insurance has made it that you want to go to a network provider because we vetted the network providers and we know the vetting is a signature. Okay? Right. right, it right. is. Mm-hmm. So we, we've we've allowed ourselves to dumb down our profession to that degree mm-hmm. and we've allowed ourselves to create a situation where we're not getting uh, reimbursement at the level that we need to 
for you know for the time and expertise that we have and, and that's my challenge with people for fillings at the end of the day you know if dentists were to be on if i were to be honest with you john and say do you like doing fillings i mean it's it's not my favorite thing okay so then why the hell do you do it I guess you do it because it's part of bringing. It's a part of the fa- the comprehensive dentistry. Okay, great. It's part so of still, you can still, I'm not see what people misunderstand about what I'm saying is I'm not saying get rid of it out of your practice. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying you stop doing but it. But honestly, though, gotcha. he's exactly right. Is like when I sit down and I see, and you know this, is that what I'm passionate about is implant dentistry. Sure. I love to place dental implants, but I also love to do crowns. Right. Like I would rather do a crown than do a film. Yeah. Yeah. I will tell you that crowns are limiting too. But let's get to the crowns next. Right. Okay? Yeah. 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 But, so, but because you have to everything. But I would crawl, rather walk. Run, right. Correct? Exactly. Right. Right. So, right. so your so your idea is, is that you're saying you know not that they're bad, not that we shouldn't be doing, but that you well, yourself. I, I did say you shouldn't be doing them. Well, right. But but you would like you would like someone else to be doing yes, them in your so, practice. So, so what people uh, listen? I, I want to make the distinction between a practice and a business. Okay. Now, business is a dirty word in so many people's minds. Okay. Mm-hmm. But a practice is something that provides a living for me. Okay. In other words, I want to make 150, 200 grand, whatever the number may be. I want to live a good life. I want to be an unbelievable family man. I want to drop my kids to school. I want to pick my kids up from school. I want to work four days a week and boom. Yeah. That's the life I want to live. Have a practice. Yeah. Okay. But I think there's much greater things out there for all of us. And I say you should suggest you having a business. And what happens in a business is that you expand your range of services so that you can capture a greater market. You want to bring in auxiliary providers, meaning another dentist, whether it's a partner or an associate or whatever it may be. So you can have that person slowly do those things that are now that you can let go of. Yes. And so that your practice can still be a business. Right. And see, ultimately what happens is if people really follow through this, the concept of what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to get at is they'll realize that they can have more time off. Yeah. Because if I asked you, how much time do you take off? How much time per year? Yeah. Uh, three to four weeks. Is that enough? You always want more. Okay. So why don't you take more? Good question. Okay, but no, in all seriousness, why don't, why don't you don't take we? more? Well, because you, I guess you have a certain amount of production that you have as a goal. Okay, so fillings are keeping you from doing that production. Good point, right. So right? you're saying, I'm going to change that game. I'm saying that you need to change that yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. At least, how about this? I want to appeal to those people who are have, that find my message appealing. Sure. You know, I'm, if you're happy doing fillings and making 150 grand a year, whatever the number is. You're not going to change that person. I, right, no, right. I don't want to change that right. person. You're looking for the too. people no, who right. feel that. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that either. Right, okay? right, right. right. But if somebody can be that true to themselves, that they say, you know what, this is the life I want. I live a good life. You live better than 90% of the people in the world, 95% of the people in the world, 90% of the people in this country. Why would you, why would I want to change you? But if you see something greater for yourself, then, you know, and, and it really boils down to having a tough session with yourself of, of really figuring out what, what motivates you. So I'll ask you, Wes, how much time do you take off? I would say I'm looking back at my wife there. I would say probably four weeks at least. Yeah, is that is that true? Four? Do you have, how I'm many? Not do counting you t- Fridays though. I mean, we can't. Yeah, no, no, you can't yeah. count Fridays. Yeah, right. So, because that, yeah, four, okay. four weeks. Four weeks. Yeah. Okay. So what's the most consecutive weeks you take off? Two at Christmas time. Two at Christmas time. Why don't you take three weeks off in a row? What's your wife's name? Laurie. Laurie, would you like him to take three weeks off? Yeah. Okay. What prevents you from taking three weeks off in a row? I see it in your eyes. <laughs> Probably production. Fear. Yeah, fear. No, but don't yeah, say, exactly. it's yeah, not I'm production, afraid. it's fear. It's true. Okay? Yeah. yeah. So because at the end of the day, you, but it's more than just the fear. Now let's dive down. So this is what I'm trying to get people to do, okay? Okay. So let's dive down to what's keeping you. Would you Would you like to take three weeks off? Because your wife would. Oh, yeah, totally. Okay, well, do you have kids? Yes. How many do you have? Two. Two? Yeah. What are the ages? 11 and 7. Okay, so your kids are like, my, my kids are uh, 7, 9, and 11. Right. I only hesitate because they were 6, 8, and 10 for so long. It's so easy for me to say it, okay? <laughs> right, In the last month, they've all gone from 6, 8, 10 <laughs> yeah. to 7, 9, 11. Right. Okay, so now I should just give it to the 9 and say 7, 11. We'll be with a perfect Indian perfect. family because <laughs> we, all own, we all own India 7, <laughs> 11s. Awesome. Okay, so your kids are young, okay? Right. So the, so the truth is, look, you will, if you talk to anybody that is older than us, okay, or has kids older than us, okay, they will tell you they grew up like that, right? Yes. Get the time that you can with them. Right. So your wife would like to take three weeks off in a row your kids would like you to take three weeks off in a row so why don't you mm-hmm. so what what are the reasons that now we're going to answer the question now okay i'm going to put you guys on the spot so what are the reasons you don't do it what are your fears well fear of i guess really it would hurt my practice because i'm a single single doc practitioner okay great yeah so why don't you bring somebody in 
Well, you know, you and I've talked about that. It's like, how do you get to that point? Get rid of fillings and crowns and let them do them all. And focus your, free your time up to be able to focus on those things that bring you joy and those things that bring you the production that you've had. Because at the end of the day, the, the real fear is we're afraid of losing that production, correct? Right. And mm-hmm. fillings and crowns at the end of the day produce X amount well, of production. Well, that's the thing is like that that in, in our mind, I think, is our bread and butter is fillings and crowns. And it is. But, okay, it yeah. is. And, and, but I feel like too, like, you know, whenever you walk in the operatory and it only takes 10 minutes to place a dental implant and that's $2,000 versus... No, it's not $2,000. It's 3500 Well, that's you, true. Well, then okay. just talking about the surgical, but by the but time no, you're restored, but you, it's... But you're a general dentist, correct? Yeah, yeah. So you have both ends of it. Yeah, 4500 so not. Too, how often do you... No. So this is the other thing that drives me nuts. How correct. often do you place an implant and not restore it? N- Never. So the implant procedure, the tooth replacement procedure, right. is thirty five hundred dollars or whatever the number is. It's not two thousand dollars. Right. Right. Okay. Because in fact, I would say you're more profitable, hopefully, on the back end of that oh, most right. than on the front I spend end of like it. Like five minutes in the, the overhead room after is that. much less. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so even time wise and even all oh, of that, yeah. right? So to restore very, it. Very okay? profitable. Okay. Yeah. So 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 do me a favor, and when you say an implant is two grand, that's that's not true. As a true. general dentist, the implant procedure is thirty five hundred, whatever your fee is, right. to include restoring it. Right. Okay. Okay. So why don't you do more implants? Man, I love it. Well, I've, why don't you? I guess I don't have enough time to do more implants. Because you're busy doing? Busy doing crowns and fillings. Okay. Yeah. And, and do and they pay nearly and, as well? N- no. No, okay. they don't. All right, so yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, it's logical when people. So people, what happens is they get this whole thing in your head that I've lost my mind, and I have. I'm certifiably crazy. A, psych- a board certified psychiatrist has told me I'm crazy. I sleep with her every night, okay? <laughs> well, most nights, okay? Not every night she, she can handle me, okay? Not I me, mean, my snoring is what I'm talking about, okay? But. Um, well, I just want people to see that dentistry can be so much more. It can be whatever you want it to be, okay? And what I hear from you is that you want to do something different, but your, your mindset is stuck in doing fillings and crowns. So you're, what I'm hearing is it's kind of like the medical models, what you're embracing, is you're saying you bring in the nurse practitioner. That's the kind of the it's same a dentist, idea. dentist, though. Right, right, right. But yeah. you're saying, though. I'm not saying you bring in a no, dentist. No, I know, but you're like saying you, you, you're delegating to new, an associate dentist, for instance, mm-hmm. can do this, these procedures. Yeah. And you bring them in. You allow them to do the most they can do at and the they, beginning. And hopefully they can replace hope, themselves, too. Right, exactly. In other words, they can graduate. Because hopefully what will happen is, in my perfect model, which I haven't achieved yet, okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, because some reason I can't keep associates in my practice. But that's, a, <laughs> that's a different problem, okay? But I shouldn't say I can't keep them. I, I keep finding... Anyway, I, I don't want to say anything like that, okay? So um, it's it's a two-way street. Okay, so in the model is, is you like doing what? Single unit implants get your boat? Yeah, I like that. Okay, I like good. hybrids too. Okay, I mean, great. Yeah. So would you rather do hybrids or single unit implants? Man, that's a tough call. I love single units. And but there's going to come a time where you don't like single units anymore. But I like the challenge of a hybrid. Okay, yeah. great. Right. You see. So what's yeah. going to happen is what I want you to do is set a goal that five years from now, you only do hybrids. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. good. Okay? That's, That's a big good. goal. Well, whatever your and goal you is, right? I mean, your goal is going to change, right? right, right. At, the end of the day, at the end of the day, what it really boils down to is, and I don't want to put either of you on the spot, but I'm going to because no, that's I just what I do. That's good. That's good. So what, what should not every month that you personally have to produce? Um, 50 grand? 60 no, grand? No, no, I, I strive for about 70 to 80. 70 personally? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. 70 to 80. Yeah. So basically you need to do two hybrid cases a month. Three hybrid cases a month. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the good good. Okay, so why the hell are you doing fillings and crowns? Yeah. I okay, mean, yeah, because that's a great question. But I feel like so we got to work backwards, right? So okay? how do you get there? Is the thing step like, by step, right? So marketing and driving sure, sure, but, that's a, but you're but, saying the first thing is just delegate the fillings and crowns, yes, and then start yes. freeing the time up, doing good treatment planning, yes. and driving marketing, and, yes. that, and that's what you're because trying to do. That's what got you to a point where you could even do those things. Is your brain right. correct? Right. right. So right. when you're right. doing fillings and crowns, I hate to tell you, you're not using your brain. Mm. Okay, it is mundane, like repeatable, stupid, stupid dentistry. It's right. It's monotonous. Sure. It's monotonous. Okay, right. so so my question is: is use your skills in a way to grow your practice to become a business? Mm. Okay? Sure, sure. Mm-hmm. So now now part of this also comes back to my other message, which I've I failed on in the first five years, six years of my career, is that the challenge is, is when you make that transition, you're going to take a dip. Mm. Okay, and you that, be, I think that's the fear. But you that need to be prepared fear. for that dip, yeah, right? But you're not prepared for that dip. No, I'm not. Okay, so here, here's my my other passion is I want everybody to have a personal and professional savings plan. 
Okay. I agree. Yeah. So, so ultimately, the way I look at that, and we're going to go all over the place. Your financial. Uh, there was a guy that you have had on on your your podcast mm-hmm. several times, and I'll never forget you saying about like how you've handled your purchasing and mistakes you've made. Yeah. That's me, man. Yeah. Like I'm you. I made them all right. Yeah. But so ultimately, what I did, the best thing I did is, and so I started. I graduated when I was 23. Started my practice at 24. I didn't save a penny until I was 32. Mm. Okay, mm-hmm. so the first six to eight years, I did stupid shit. Okay, yeah, do we you guys, all do. Do you guys curse on your thing? You'll bleep that well, we'll bleep out. That. It's not a big okay. yeah, it's not All right, big whatever. Deal. It's my my normal language. Okay, <laughs> I want to be respectful. Yeah, okay. no, that's, um, we're good. Uh, so, you know, I didn't save at all, and I had the ability to save. I made dumb decisions. Okay, so what I try to tell everybody coming out of school is is you need to make your savings plan a bill. Okay, so it needs to be a mortgage. Like in your life, yeah. you have bills, correct? Right, right, you have a right, mortgage. Right. Maybe you have student loan payments. Whatever mm-hmm. it is, those get taken off the top end right. before you yeah. even see any money, correct? Right. You don't right. even account yeah. that. You don't, don't even see it. You don't have right? that. You don't have that. So I have a savings plan, and I'll share numbers, okay? Because I'm an open book. So when I started, my number was a thousand dollars a month. Okay, because I, I had never done anything like that before, right. and I, I started saving a thousand dollars a month, and I didn't never I didn't even know it was gone. Right. Okay. Yeah. Then it went to two thousand dollars a month. Right. Then it went to three thousand dollars a month. Four thousand dollars a month. Okay. And it wasn't like it went there in five months. It went to a period. I did, you know. So I started a little bit late. So I was making good money at the time. Okay. So I went from a thousand to two thousand and a quarter. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then I went from two thousand to five thousand by the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I never noticed it. My lifestyle never changed. Yeah. Right. Uh, one bit whatsoever. But I started noticing that occasionally I check my 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 nest egg. Let's call. I call it the fu fund. Mm-hmm. Okay. The, <laughs> okay. Because ultimately that's what it is. It's my ability to say I don't have to do this anymore. Sure. I want to. I want to practice till forever. Right. Okay. If I won the lottery tomorrow, I would open a free clinic and do nonprofit I dentistry. Agree. Okay. Yeah, I, agree. I love yeah. what I yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I want that fu ability to be able to say, you know, I don't have to do this. Right. Yeah. Okay. Or I want that ability to say, you know what? Like right now I toy with the idea of opening a nonprofit clinic. Okay. okay? Yeah. And and I want to be able to do that. And the reason I say I can do that is you know what? Because you know what? If something happened and that I sold my practice and I failed, I say, you know what, I've saved enough. I'll right. get enough of the sale of my practice that I'm my it doesn't my, matter. Th- that doesn't I'm matter. Okay you can there. do that. Right. I could I'm I won't live like I'm living now. Right. Okay. Right. But I can I but can, you ma- can make it but work. You do that. I won't be a pauper. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I won't be a burden to my family. Yep. How about that? Okay. So, so ultimately, I've, I've created that number every month, and it just comes out of my. It just comes out. Right. It just automatically withdrawn from my bank. I never see it. I never notice it. Mm-hmm. And so, when you have that dip, like you talked about, I've you've, got, you've, you've got, got a rainy that. day fund. Yeah, you got that. You got a rainy day fund, and I do that for my practice too. Okay. So the other thing I do for my practice is I keep uh, two months of production. Right. Okay. Two months of collections. In a rainy day fund for my practice. Right. It's a lot. Okay. It's, it's a lot. More than but, most people, I think. But no, m- most people don't have <laughs> half a month. Well, I know, but if you talk to you've talked to a, a CPA, a good CPA, yeah, sure. they right. would say well, a month is about like what, what the, a lot so of them recommend. what happens if you get injured for a month? Right, man. You right. don't have your disability's not kicked in probably yet. So most, yeah. most of us have disability plans that kick in after sixty to ninety days. Exactly. Right. So, so what you happens? got one month, and then you're yeah, you're, you're having toast. to front that, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're toast, right? right. You're dipping so, so, into the rainy day so, fund. So so ultimately, now at the end of the day, if you do both ends, if you do practice and personal side, you know, if worst case scenario, if you only have a let's say you only have a month of practice, mm-hmm. you can go to the personal right. to fund this, right? Sure. Okay, so it's it's two ways, right? But I like to keep two months of collections in a rainy day fund, so I can do what. I call stupid ideas. Mm. So I can take risks with my practice. Okay, so that when I wasn't ready for the associate, because I think people bring in associates at too late of a point. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I think to a certain degree, the mistakes I made is I brought them in one day at a time, two days at a time, three days at a time, and I should have just gone full bore with it from the beginning. Mm. Okay, because then what 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 team senses or what you sense is you're not fully committed, right? Yeah. So when you right. when you when you just when you jump off the cliff, you find a way to swim, right? True. Mm-hmm. Or, or or die. What right, one, one of the other, other yeah. <laughs> Depends <laughs> if there's pool at the end, right? If there's water at the bottom yeah. of the cliff. But um, so you, you, you need to save two months of, of your practice collections. And, and see, the problem with people do it is as their practice grows, they forget to put that money aside. Okay. So, for example, in the motel business, we keep 10% of our of our annual collections in our update fund. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because mm-hmm. the franchises require us to update TVs, mattresses, yeah. all the sure. all the stuff, right? And you don't want to get. And when you're talking about you know a 200 room hotel, you don't want to suddenly have to buy 200 TVs, 200 mattresses, 200 you right. know furniture sets. You don't want that that uh, half million dollar bill. 
like that, right? Right, right? So so you have to you have to budget it out as an expense. Yeah. Right. So the same thing needs to happen in your in your personal and professional life. Gotcha. Okay. And so that way when you get to the point where you say it's time to mm-hmm. delegate okay. and you know for a little while you're just going to be working on building that in your schedule, yeah. you're going to be low production yeah. wise, but you're lower. Pl- lower, right. Okay, lower. Not low, right. But lower. Because right. you, you still got an associate that's, well, the that's practice turning is still it out. producing, but you're not right. as a yeah, person. Yeah, so you're going right. to take a small cut. Right. And you're going to be happier. And, yeah. I, and by the way, I believe that all owners should pay themselves as associates. Mm. I think you should pay yourself 30% of what you collect mm. as an associate, and then you should take a dividend check uh, as an owner for, or for uh, in your case, 100% of what's left over. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So because what happens then is is you can divide yourself into, hey, I'm making this as a dentist. I'm making this as an entrepreneur. Mm. And if you were to go away for a month, and li- let's say you were able to stick somebody else, your evil twin in mm-hmm. for a month, you would know that, hey, listen, I'm going to lose or make X down as a business owner, but I'm still going to be able to pay this yeah. person 30%. So it shows you the value of being a business owner yes. versus just being if there, if a, a, there's an a concept. concept. Yeah. If, there's yeah. even, like if there's even if a there's value. value. Like, right, because some people are, are maybe they're they're better they're off as an associate. Yes, absolutely. And I business. think that's ultimately some people have to make that tough decision sometimes. Is yeah. They have to take a – again, so ultimately people say about goal setting, I'm not the best at goal setting, but I'm, I'm just less worse – than most people, okay, mm-hmm. is I think you got to work backwards. You got to dive deep into what what the real cause is for all of these things. Mm-hmm. Well, I think too, like you know, I look at some people and they were never meant to own a business, right? And that's fine from but a personality there's, standpoint. There's a difference in a business and a practice. Right. That's true. You're right. Okay. True. You're right. Yes. But, right. But the from but the business, I think, is the concern is that, you know, there are personality. Well, there are certain personalities that are just not cut out for that and that that's OK. And you're looking for those people, it sounds like. Well, is that right? I, I, dude, the DSO dentistry is built on those right. people. Right, right, right. I mean, they're going to they will be 30 to 40, 50 percent of the dental marketplace in the next 10 years. Right. It's okay. be, they're building people directly for what it sounds like you like, though. I mean, you mm-hmm. want those guys. You want the guys to come in and say, I'm cool with that. I want to make every, I want to make 150. We can't, we can't have all cheap. Chiefs, right? I got you. I got the you. The tribe can't be yeah. all chiefs. Yeah. A, a, a kitchen can't be all chefs, yeah. right? right? You got to have cooks too, right? Right. right. Absolutely. Right. So, so, but so. you need us. But you need that kind of person who comes into your. If you're, if you have that business model, we, and you say, yes, I want somebody but, who's doing fillings and crowns, and that can be cool with that, and that can learn, maybe learn some stuff. Yes. But on the other hand, they're okay with the fact. That it's a learning process, and they're, that's what they're here to do. As long as, it, yeah, well, we can get into the whole associate yeah, mentality yeah. in a second. But, but beyond that, what what I think, I, I think we can change the course of dentistry if we can get five thousand people a year to adopt the philosophy of hiring an associate. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. And here's why I say that. So, okay. To, to, <clears throat> so we that's graduate. Awesome. We graduate five thousand people a year. Mm-hmm. North of sixty percent of them go join DSO practices. Not that there's anything wrong with that, okay? Right. That that's a business model that works. I whole I'm I'm a capitalist at heart, okay? So I believe if it's market if, driven. Listen, yeah. if our mark if our owner dentists are too stupid to figure out what drives what what the void was there, okay, and somebody else is smart enough and money enough, have enough money to fill that void, yep. shame on us. It's true. It's okay? nobody's fault but it's ours. Okay? Fault. Yeah. 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 It's completely. ours. It's yeah. our own fault. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And our, unfortunately agree. organized dentistry like the ADA and the, all these groups do nothing yeah. because they're run by old farts that right. have no earthly idea. Well, and they got that, people that, on the that, boards of some of these companies. Yeah, that are but that's okay. But that, that's you know? that's politics, okay? Yeah. But yeah. but at the end of the day, our leadership is old people that left practice in the eighties and nineties. Yep. And my other saying is, we practice in two thousand seventeen today, but our business philosophies and practice principles are guided by nineteen eighties dentistry. That's exactly okay? right. That's and, exactly and right. Because so, so, so you do things the way your dental school students teacher taught you, who last practiced in nineteen eighty, probably. Okay. And and so at the end of the day, it's a different world. It's a different market. You know. The other thing I try to tell the dentist to help them understand is you guys are young, so you may not understand this, but but if do any of your parents practice dentistry, mm-hmm, my no, dad did. Okay. Yeah. So did your dad ever spend any fifteen thousand dollars on any piece of equipment in his practice? Never, never. Never. What can you buy today for less than fifteen thousand dollars? Nothing. Okay, so you tell me how your dad's business principles even remotely yeah, apply it's, to today. It was an amazing, they very don't. tough transition, they man, don't, because right? it wasn't even close. And yeah, so, it wasn't so, even close. So our dentists and our mindsets and, and even education is guided by these gurus who have never owned or operated a practice in the last 10, 15, 20 years. Even in dentistry, it's changed in 10 years. Yeah. I mean, 10 years ago, like a digital pan was cool. Right, right. right. I mean, today, like a digital yeah. pan is like substandard dentistry. Exactly, exactly. Exactly. Okay, I mean, you could go from a thirty thousand dollar pan. Now you got to spend north of a hundred grand right. to even be in the ball game. Right. And so, 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 to, I, I think unfortunately we're being misled, and we're being misadvised by uh, we're allowing it to happen. 
But you're saying, again, that if, if docs could learn the value of an associate and set these types, whether it's exactly like your setup or it's just the idea of a mentorship situation, then now you have, you're advancing that we are doctors, we're professionals. That's what's going to bring, you You would say, is going to bring dentistry to where it should be rather than bringing it to a lower common denominator. Is that what you're saying? I, I don't care about that part of it. Okay. Okay, I don't care about the, deno- see, look, I don't worry myself with what, Our profession feels our denominator is. Our profession is going to do what it does. I'm only worried about myself, okay, and and those I can help and touch. Yeah, Yeah. but then that's all I can worry about, right? So, so, but I want to go back to your point. But you said though that you feel like this could help dentistry. It can, yeah, if dentistry wants it, right? Right. But if it doesn't, the main thing you're going, hey, I'm going to do it. I look, I'm only. I know what I got to do. I got to. I I only care about myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't influence. You can't change everything. Is what you're saying. I do care about others, okay. But at the end of the day, I can only control what I do, yeah. right? Yeah. I can't control what you guys are going to do when you get back, okay? But my hope is is that I can create a disruption, not change, mm-hmm. okay, disruption in your thinking to open your mind to broader horizons, sure. okay? So, but, but see, one of the things I'm hearing from you is that uh, I, I have a specific, I don't want to say methodology to it because it's not, uh, but... Ultimately, what happens is, is we you've gone to CE events, right? Of course. So have you gone to like? So I I, I break down CE events into like there's there's like uh, like what this is this weekend. Yeah. It's fun. You don't really. I'm not saying you don't learn anything, but you don't learn learn no, anything. No, no, okay? no. Okay. Right. Because right. everybody like I'm giving 50 minutes to talk. I mean, there's only so much I can talk about sure. in 50 minutes, right? Sure. So I can't really get you to to get buy in, but I can get you exposure. Right. Okay. I can get you exposed to an idea, and then the next step is workshops and things like that. Right. Okay? Right. Right. So so. You know, so CE events are like that. So when when you go to workshops, what's your biggest complaint when you get back? Biggest complaint after getting back? Yeah, it's, it's usually I, implementation. Yeah, you, you have to say how to implement it. Implement because, like, how do you get your practice? team on okay, board? But what, yeah. But sure, yeah. but what, okay, so now really dive into why that's happening. What happens when you get to the office Monday morning? You got to do fillings and crowns. But beyond that, you just got to go to work. Yeah, right? you got to make right. money. So, so my you question to you is, if you're going to go to a workshop mm-hmm. that you believe you felt was important enough for you to fork out thousands of dollars, yep. right, right. time away from your family, get on an airplane, right. yeah. do all those things that we, you know, people like me ask you guys to do right. at the end of the day, then let me ask you this. Why are you not scheduling Monday morning off? As a team meeting. And that's been something that that's, we've done. We've, we've, about doing that, we've been doing the Spear that. Continuum yeah, as an sure. example. Right. And yeah, that's what the first time we went and out why there. why aren't you taking the team with you? Well, that's what we got to do. And they have a team program now. And still and you we're, got to have huddles at night. Right. 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 Yeah. You got to okay. you got to make sure that hey, it's actually. How, how are we going to do this? Yeah. Right. What's our action plan? You got to yeah. have buy-in from your team. We're doing that now. We're setting a day out after we come back and we're going, okay, here's what we learned. Let's. But a day's not even really enough. I mean, it's. But you got to do it in chunks and stuff, right? Because you got to still be mindful of production. Correct. Right. So uh, th- those are part of the part of the, that. And then, see, the other thing is is along with that is is now h- how do you implement when your when your team is so focused on, you know, your schedule so full of fillings and crowns and stuff mm-hmm. like this that are non productive. Like like it hit me in the head. I've had it hit me in the head twice. Okay. Once when I first brought my associate on straight out of school, like literally straight out of school. Look, the very first associate I got three, four, five years ago. Okay, straight out of school. I looked at his production. He got paid the same for the crown that I got paid for, the crown. And I'm 16 years in, and I do it in half the time. I mean, one-third the time. And I'm saying to him, I'm saying to myself, why in the hell does this guy get paid $700 for the crown that I get paid $700 for the crown? Why is that? So what would you do about that? I said, I don't want to do them anymore. That's when I said. So that's when you said. That's it. when I said that insurance has commoditized us to a point that, I, and in my opinion, there's no return. Okay, so it's a part of our practice. So I said, you know what? I got to do something that produces more. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I said after 15 years, I get paid the same as if I was day one out. Okay. So what are the things? Does that make sense? What I'm saying? I I got it. I mean, you're you're what? Like six years out of school? Seven years out of school? Uh, Twelve. Twelve years out of school? Shit. Okay, you look young. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Yes. So so you're 12 years out of school. You get paid today the same as somebody that would join your practice one day out. Because you take insurance, I assume, correct? Yeah. Okay. So MetLife, Delta Dental, whoever yeah. it is, yeah. whatever bastard company you want to name, yeah. okay, yeah. they would pay you the same as they would pay the day guy. That's exactly that came right. Out of school, okay? Yeah, they get right. the same reimbursement. As so you tell me, how have you failed yourself that you're doing something 15, 12 years later that's the same as somebody that gets paid one day out of school? 
But what other, I mean, you think about, again, coming back to the medical model, doesn't, it's no different with them. They don't get paid uh, more so to do a bypass surgery. Just like everybody else's idiots, they get paid less today. Well, I know. Just less. Less. So, so the Titanic's going down, and you can get on the lifeboat. You're going to go down. With no, the no. I'm just saying that, like, you're you're saying, well, how, how do you how do you measure that? You can't measure that. You you can't say, well, you because you did 15 years in. There's guys 15 years out that suck, sure. and there's a guy one year out that's awesome. So you can't necessarily say that always you should be paid more just because you've been out a long time. You're just saying that your own, your value for your service is more because you believe in your service. And sure. that's and that's a good yeah. thing. I'm not saying but it's a bad thing. Whatever it is, I mean, I would assume that your life cost you more today than it did 12 years ago. No, most definitely. Sure, of course. Okay, so how have you made more money? Raise my fees. But your insurance raising fees is artificial. Okay. Well, it's, uh, we're, we're, we're more fee- we're not we're not straight insurance. You guys work together? No. No. No, okay. no, no, no. So, like no. for my practice, I'm only an in-network provider for Delta Dental. Yeah. Okay. And the rest of it. So is you out of network. what percentage is Delta Dental of your practice? Uh, maybe fifteen percent. I think. Fifteen twenty yeah. percent. Yeah. Okay. Twenty five percent reimbursement from insurance. Over, like my entire okay. collection yeah. is twenty five percent of insurance. So you guys are unusual because I'm eighty percent reimbursed by insurance companies. Okay. Yeah, I'm thirty so, percent like cash. Well, actually. Yeah. So, so, but nonetheless, if you're an insurance provider, your fee, fee raising doesn't matter. Is, it's artificial. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay, that's it's true. artificial it's just for you. It's just, yeah, it's <laughs> you feel a little better. UCR, okay? <laughs> but at the end of the day, your fees. Now, but the other way, the other answer I'm trying to get out of you is you see more patients. Right. Okay. And you do more productive procedures, of right. course. But That's you're it. not doing more productive procedures. You're doing fillings and crowns. Well, but you, he's been doing, you know, and I have been doing, you know, more implant dentistry, okay, more cosmetic dentistry. Sure, cosmetic dentistry is fillings and crowns. It requires you. Well, that's true. That's true. Okay. But if you're talking about doing, you know, reconstructive dentistry, I'm not talking about that at all. Well, it is, but you do more of that compared to when you that's started just more, off. That's just multiple fillings and crowns in a row. But is it more productive or no, more? No, I tell more, you what. If you use it, I'm if you do ten things. crowns in a three-hour visit versus doing two crowns, though, you know, if you can, if you can do more, well, if you can do I'll, a big case, you're doing more big cases. Your overhead's you lower. Have you ever sat down and put in time how much time you spend on a big case? How much time you spend over, like to, all together? Yeah. Yeah, I, you do have to. That's what no, we were challenged to. Yeah, yeah, okay, we were so, challenged so to do that. Let's, go, let's walk through this, okay? Yeah, yeah. So I, I can do a root canal crown in an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. I see, I don't even have to, my patient doesn't even ask me questions. Okay, I turn the TV on, I put right. the rubber dam on, yeah. I work for an Roll hour for and a half, it. and they leave. Yep. Okay, right. I make two grand. Yeah. General production, okay? Now your 10 unit case is going to bring you how much? Uh, $15,000? Say 15000 Okay, let's yeah. say $15,000. So that is one seventh of my root canal crown, okay? So I have to do seven root canal crowns. So I have to see seven patients, okay? So your 10-unit case, so you have to, you're going to do a consultation, mm-hmm. correct? You're going to probably do a second consultation with the patient because I'm assuming the patient's not going to come in and buy right away. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay? yeah. So then you're going to sit down and do your treatment planning. Mm-hmm. Okay, then you're going to do the lab communication for your wax up. Right. Okay, then you're going to sit down and prep the teeth. Right. You're going to make your temporaries. You're going to communicate with your lab again mm-hmm. on how, what you want your you want your restorations to look like. Okay, then you're going to check the lab case when it comes back. Okay, and then you're going to seat and deliver everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, look how many visits and time and mental anguish you have in that procedure. Okay, and I'm not saying it's not a profitable procedure. I'm right. not saying it's not something to strive for. Okay, but what I'm saying is even that mm-hmm. is not the best use of your time per hour you're still it, not it, making yes. what you're making it's less stressful than doing seven patients right okay in right. a sense right okay for many people it is okay but what i'm saying is that's still not the best use of your time gotcha okay gotcha. Does, does that, i'm you, with you, you. No, i'm with there? you i'm with you okay. you still make more there's per so, hour there's so much planning and yeah. non-production effort that we put no time on because you take time away from your family to do that. You do it early in the morning, you do it at lunch, you do it after work. And that's why you got guys that are saying we should do lab fee plus hourly, sure. you know, yeah, rather than that, because that's yeah. the only other way to handle okay. that sure. if, if, if you want to. Okay, so, so what are you going to do? Raise your hourly every year? Good point. Good, good point. point. Yeah, that is a good point. At what, well, at what point? How are you going to see? My question is, is where is your ceiling? Mm-hmm. There is a ceiling. Yeah, there's a definite there's ceiling. A ceiling. There's correct? a definite okay, ceiling. Okay, so now let's go. Now, now ask me the question. <laughs> so what is my suggestion for people? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So where do you go? And okay. I know it's different for everybody, probably yeah, depending sure. on what you love. But what is. But what learn is, to love someone. It's, like yeah. it's like getting married in the Indian times. You will learn to love your wife. We picked a good one for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, oh, but man. okay, so. um. So implants are a good one. Yeah. Okay. So implants for me, I have about an hour and 15 minutes for an implant start to finish restored single unit. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Chair time and everything in. Okay. So that becomes profitable to me at about $2,000 an hour okay. per implant. Okay. That's about right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for healed root surgery, even grafted surgery. It's still, it doesn't it's matter. Grafting adds yeah, five yeah, minutes. Yeah, right. Come it's on. not a big yeah. deal. Okay. So as a Seric owner, 
Okay, so my costs are ne- my, like I can plan, place, and restore an implant in material costs of less than six hundred dollars. Guided, I agree. you know, yeah. using seems, a name brand implant. Seems, yeah. seems good. Okay, yeah. so and then I'm it's a thirty five hundred dollar fee procedure. Okay, and I've got an hour and fifteen minutes of chair time in it. Okay, yeah. so now I'm at two thousand dollars an hour. Yeah. Okay, so my goal should be I need to do more of those. Mm-hmm. I okay, agree. so I can do more of those by not having been focused on doing two hygiene checks every hour and doing a filling every hour and doing a crown every hour. So I can mentally think about what is it going to take. I can go out to the community because there are dentists all around you. That Look are, at Justin then, Moody, for yeah. example. Mm-hmm. He literally is a general dentist, built his entire business on referral based dentists. Right. So there are dentists around you that would just love to have somebody do their work for them. So right. basically, okay? in that lull time where you're switching from fillings and crowns mm-hmm. to doing the things you you love, have to build your business. You're building your business. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, like just you, networking. Just, well, just like you did when you started your practice. Sure, right. Okay? Yeah. It's so, not hard. And the next step beyond that would be like, let's take a look at sleep apnea. Mm-hmm. Okay? Right. So sleep apnea is another thing that's already in your practice. Okay? Right. Now, now here's, the, here's the challenge for me. Here's my mindset changed a year and a half to two years ago on sleep. Okay? Mm-hmm. Because implant dentistry still requires what? Who can do it? The doctor. The doctor. Yeah. You have yeah. to be there and you sure. have to do it. Right? Sure. Yeah. Okay. It's still all your time. That's exactly right. Okay. So there's a rate limiting step there. Mm-hmm. It's labor. It's, la- it's labor. At the yeah. end of your mule. Right. Okay. Right. And, and call it what you want. Yeah. Okay. Smart business people make money off other people's efforts. That's right. Residual okay. income. Right. To a certain degree. Right. right. Yeah. So now sleep is one of those things that who can I delegate that to? Hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Assistants can do a lot of that. Al- almost all of it. Yeah. Because almost really all of it. it's just measurements and impressions. Right. To a certain, you just once you get review, the system down. You have to review yeah, you have to, yeah, I review. call it social visits. You walk yeah. in and you true. say, how are you doing? True. Yeah. You're right. looking at numbers. And then, and you're looking my, at numbers. And like, then what happens, numbers, things are going great. Then what happens is my assistant comes to me and says, hey, we're seeing so-and-so. They're reporting this. What do you want me to do? Okay. Yep. Does, that, does that make sense? Right. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, so in our practice, we've dedicated a sleep champion. Her name is Liz in our practice. And I she's, like that. She's, I like that. Though. Just stop right champion. there. Champion. Yeah, I like it's that. a champion. That's cool. She owns it. Yeah. So it's her baby. <clears throat> it's, but she has a team. I'm going to go okay. back and do, because I'd like doing Botox. Yeah, you know, she has a Botox champion. Yeah. It's like I have a Botox champion. Yeah, yeah somebody cool. in your practice that is owns, it's an that ambassador. Owns it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or you call and an ambassador. And keeps yeah. track of everything. They own it. And, yeah. Yeah. Okay, like yeah, yeah. Liz used to be my implant champion. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and so so I want to get into talking about how this is beneficial for your team members as well. Okay, because just like you want to grow, they want to grow too. Okay, yeah. you know, like I, like I look at Liz, she started with me straight out of assisting school. Uh, she was... Uh, 25, 26 at the time, whatever it was, okay? And I asked her one day, I said, when you're 45, do you think you can do this pace anymore? She goes, I don't think so. I said, what, what are you going to do with yourself? Mm. I said, how are you going to replace that income? Can you live without the money? She goes, of course not. I go, then you better find something else to do, mm. right? And, and I said, well, there's growth opportunities here in the practice, so you got to become a champion, mm-hmm. right? So you got to own this business, this business model within the business, okay? But... So ultimately, so I got a text from her yesterday. Hey, I did my ninth sleep appliance today while I was here. Hmm. Ninth for the month, okay? Awesome. So I set a goal for her that we need to do for the first quarter, 10 per month, Mm -hmm. okay? And you won't have to ever assist again. Man. Interesting. That's awesome. Okay. Because uh, and I, you're replacing the same income yeah, of course. with right. that no, as long as you hit that, your goals. More than that, I still have another more than assistant. That. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But so, as long as you hit right. your goals, well, she's I making more. At the end of the day, I, I, you know, if you use the general guru format mm-hmm. that your, your team member should produce, your, your, uh, it should be 5X, correct? Mm-hmm. So, so mm-hmm. for every dollar a person costs you, we should your practice your revenue about 5X. So for me, 10 sleep appliances is going to revenue you all in about $28,000 per month, okay? Mm-hmm. So I said to her, I said, Liz, if you never want to assist, uh, you, you need to revenue about twenty five dollars to $30,000 a month, mm-hmm. okay? And I said, I just want you to focus on sleep. So what's happened is, is by, so what I did in my, because I have my personal rainy day fund and my practice rainy day fund, I said, Liz, I will fund you for six months. Okay, so your salary let's let's call it fifty grand a year. Okay, maybe it's more, maybe it's less. Okay, but let's call it fifty grand a year. So that's twenty five thousand dollars out of my pocket that I'm willing to take a bet mm. on you. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. So Liz, after six months, if this doesn't work out, you're gonna you're gonna come back and suck spit. Mm-hmm. Okay, gotcha. so I said, all right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna front the money for you. We're gonna make it happen. All right. So Liz is one hundred percent dedicated to sleep. That's it. Liz, you go out and meet the neurologist, you go out and meet the psychiatrist, you go out and meet the sleep physicians, take me, set my meetings up when I need to go. You go You go follow up with all these patients, you write the letters, that's all you do all day long, whatever it takes for you to get to the number we need to get to. And she's working 
less. Yeah. In a way, she's working yeah. the same yeah. hours, yeah. but yeah. she's, she's working, working a different, yeah. she's different working kind of work. Yeah. She's yeah. working differently. smarter, not harder, yeah. as they yeah. say. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. Which is what you're right. doing, Does too. that make sense? Yeah. Right. Okay. Sure. So now here's the beauty of it. <clears throat> so legally, at least in my state, state of North Carolina, I imagine every state in the country, is dentistry cannot happen while I'm not there. Right. Okay, while a dentist is not there. But who's in my office when I was here? Associate. Yeah, assistant, my associate. associate. My associate. Right, right. So legally, there's a dentist in the building, so that frees Liza to do what? Impressions. Gotcha. Impressions and she's records. She's supervised, yeah. yeah. She's supervised, correct? Right. So now I'm producing when I'm not even there. Right. Residual income. In, yeah. in, in a way. Right. Okay, in a way. It's residual income. So ultimately, that's, that's the model I need people to get. And that's what I need them to understand is... Sure, you can you can continue to work hard and do all those things, but have this on the side then, yeah. if you're money driven. Because at that, that point, you're because I think people are driven by three things. Uh, ultimately, whatever, you, however you boil it down, it's three things. It's it's either money, time, or satisfaction. Okay, so I'm past the money stage of my life. I'm about right now. It's about time. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I'm sure five or seven years from now, it'll be all about satisfaction, right? So um. So those are the things that I want people to understand is how can we make that happen? What do we have to do? you got to think backwards uh, to, to, to achieve that goal. And you got to say, what, what in dentistry can I do that allows me to make more money without having to actually do the work myself? So what I'm hearing, though, from all of this is that it seems like a linchpin of this idea is you have to have an associate that is happy in that situation, you know, that, that is happy being somebody who's kind of getting some of that more basic dentistry some of that less productive dentistry and is cool with that and is and is maybe not necessarily wanting to turn into a business owner necessarily. Do you feel that that's the case? I'm not feel, saying that at all. Not at all. So you no. feel like it's somebody who, because if, if you feel like somebody that you want to learn to become more like you at some point and maybe replace you at some right, point? So let's, let's, I, I always believe in the concept of replace yourself. Okay. My, my over, so I, I believe in two things with my team members. One, always work to replace yourself. Okay, and two, own your space. Okay, so own whatever it is you do and work towards replacing yourself. Okay, so I'm going to use you as an example because this is what I hear all the time about associates. Okay, it's well, you got to find associates who's happy doing fillings and crowns. I'm like, well, what the hell? You're the owner and you're happy doing fillings and crowns. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so how much? What's so you want an associate who wants to do all the nice stuff and you're going to do all the crap stuff? You know, it doesn't make sense. So now, so we we determine that you need to do 80 grand a month. Mm-hmm. All right. So if you're doing four hybrids a month, do you want to do any single units? Do you need to do any single units? No. Would you let your associate do those single units? Yeah. Okay, great. Every day, all day. All right, so great. So start with an associate and say, listen, my plan, and this is what I try to get my people. Just be up front with them. Right, but, but my problem with millennials, and I don't want to get into this, is they can't see two years from now. They want it now, 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 and now, that's not, now. Right. That's okay? why I'm saying that it that's, could be challenging. Yeah. But you gotta, you, you'll got you find the right person who sees the vision. Okay, you will. Okay. So the vision is, is listen, <clears throat> first got to prove yourself that you can do fillings and crowns very well. Because if you can't do fillings and crowns very well, I'm sure as a hell not going to let you drill an implant into somebody's head. Yep. Okay. Okay. Right. If you can't take out a tooth well and preserve a socket, I sure the hell not going to let you take out a tooth and put an implant in at the same time. Okay, so prove yourself on these basic things. Do root canals. Become a good, solid general dentist. Okay, right. I'm going to focus my attention on sleep, single unit implants, a few hybrids here and there. My goal is that a year or two from now, I no longer want to do single unit implants. Okay, and you can have all of them. Gotcha. Okay, because I'm going to move on to that. And then okay. you're 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 enhancing the skills of your associates. Of course. So they're still being trained. The understanding from the beginning is you will eventually get here. Yeah. But you have to show me. Or you'll me, surpass me. Right, but show me that yeah. you can do this first. Well, what's wrong with that? No, it's nothing there's wrong, nothing wrong with, that. with that. No, because no, no. Then, I'm not, I don't I think agree there's that wrong. we need to try to mentor people because there's a lack of mentorship. Yeah, I don't think there's but, anything wrong with that. Mentorship, but mentorship. See, the, the mentality. See, here's. But what you're saying is mentorship. But somebody but in comes in, though, okay, into the practice. The tough thing is is that this, this, this person comes out of school, and they're like, I am a doctor. So this person comes into their room who needs a hybrid, and they're like, so I'm just going to pass that on. And now, they, what they see, though, is they see the 30% from that $50,000 case. Right, right. Not that, not that it's wrong. I'm not saying it's wrong. But you got to get past them. They're going to have to get past that mindset that, so they, that they deserve that because they treatment plan the patient. They have to go, no, Tarun is, he knows Dr. Agarwal can do this at a high level, so he gets it. I mean, that, What's they, in the best interest of the patient? For you to do it. For you to do it. You, you want, I want somebody six months out of school doing that? No and way. I, as no practice, way. Well, I'm the practice it. owner going to have to fix that crap? I don't disagree okay? with you. And whose name is going to be bludgeoned when that Yours. doesn't go well? Yours. I mean, so you tell me, my challenge with millennial, like I talked to the millennial guy yesterday, I made him buy me dinner just for the hell of it, okay? But, um, <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. I bet that was hard right No, there. it was Hattie Bees. I mean, <laughs> so, I mean like, listen, so you go, these guys are unbelievable sometimes. We get there and there's a line out the door to go to this Nashville chicken place, right? Mm-hmm. And it's cold outside. 
outside. I'm like, dude, there's no way we're going to even get inside the door, much less order in 20 minutes. Oh, it'll be 20 minutes. I'm like, dude, I'll bet you dinner on it. Okay? Mm-hmm. I love yeah. it. And you won that one, didn't you? Hell yeah. <laughs> I was guaranteed all day. Eight dollars. Wisdom versus yeah, a millennial. Of course, right? Yeah, that's right. It's $8. I'm like, dude, you can buy me an $8 deal and a heartbeat, right? Of course I'm going to let him pay for it, right? But... um but ultimately, <laughs> so my challenge with millennials is they think of an associateship as a residency mm. where you just go in and try shit. Yep. Oh, I got a patient to say yes. Let me just try it. Why right. not? It's true. Fake it till you make it. No, yeah. well, sure. I faked it till I made it too. Because right, that's but what I, owned, I did. But I owned the practice. I mean, that's what we I all, owned the practice. I put the money on the line. That's true. There's I, a difference between an employee yeah. and an employer. So Absolutely. That, it, but, but I guess, again, we, we all, though, didn't – that wasn't our mindset. That wasn't your mindset. You well, went – you know what? You you went in there and you said, I'm going to try this. I've never done it before, and I want – you wanted to do that. That's why I you got to where you are. Up. Well, but did you – but th- was that really the way you looked at it? Did you look at it as they're backing me up, or did you look at this, I'm going to fake it till I make it? Of course you fake it Because, I mean, it. that's what I'm saying is, like, okay. a lot of people, if they're pushing, if they really do want to be successful, they're going to say, let me try it, man. Let me try I want to be better, so let so, me try okay, it. Here, here's my answer for somebody that says you want to try it. Here's a wonderful class in the Dominican Republic, or here's Justin Moody's class in Phoenix, Arizona. Be happy to go try it. Gotcha. You go I try it there. The test, you go try it there. Yeah. Then you come back here and try it here. Okay, I got you. I think that's we, a good answer We talked that. about this this morning yeah. with somebody you know that it's like, man, every time you just try to lay out a little bit of something like, hey, I really think you need to do this. Right. I really think you need to do this. And they're not doing it. Right. And so why would you ever want them touching something that's more right. complicated if they're not willing to they're put not in willing the to just We go talked with Justin Moody level. yesterday about his, you know, you know, his implant pathways program and it's legit. Right. And to me, it's not taking a weekend course. It's it's right. a continuum to learn complex dentistry, the procedures that you might love. And by to the do. way, where'd that patient come from? The one that walked in looking for the hybrid. Yeah, right. where did they come from? They usually came from someone else you did a hybrid on, or right, somebody so, else that's oh, got that so word. That somebody else has got hey, that word of mouth. Open this up yeah, for you. I don't want you losing. No, I'm good. I'm good. Don't worry. I got it. <laughs> but but, but where that? So who put the money up and created that goodwill? It's all the marketing came from so, you. So like it's like it's like I had an associate once, a patient I've been talking to eight years, finally ready to do his full his uh, veneer work. Yeah. Well, I saw a patient in hygiene. I got them to say yes. I'm like, did you read the notes? I, we've planned and done everything That's for eight patient. years. Right. They're, they're, they're that all would really my, upset me. They're, they're all mine at the end of the day. Right. Look, I make no bones about it. The, my name is on the door. I put the million and a half dollars in this place. I write your check. I write everybody else's check in here. It's my patient. So how do you handle that then? If, if no. It's, the answer is no. The answer is no. The answer is, listen, have you done one before? Mm. Have you gone and taken any Show classes me about your it? Results. No, no. So have, you got gone, it. have you gone and taken any classes about it? Because everybody yeah. has Honestly, to have their first. You have is... to lose your virginity some point in time, right? <laughs> but you're not going to be the guy to go in there and show them. Is what no, you're I'm, saying? No, I'm happy to. You will. Okay. 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 I'm happy to. So teach they say people. I want to learn one. You're going to say you can have one of my patients. I'm, I'm going to say you go take education first. Yeah. And then I will mentor you through the process. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. On, on a patient that's, yeah, the, of course. that's and their then, patient. And I will inform the patient okay. up front. Here's the best example, yeah. though, is like your wife needs veneers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's say that she knows. Okay, you're going to let your associate say, hey, I want... I want to. I want to prep your wife's veneers mm. because if you treat every member of your practice, yeah, like our that. saying is we treat every treat, right. treat right. your patients as like your, you would your, your family. So would you let your okay, associate so treat your, your wife? This. Right, right. Let me ask you this: Would you let your associate prep your wife for veneers? No, I would. Okay, now what would you want him to do? What would prove it to you? You would say what? You would say you need to go to Spear, right? And you need to do the. Facially that, generated right. treatment planning. You also Learn need and to go to the prep course. Right. And go to the prep course. So and I told then, you they treat then, it like a residency. Yeah. Then I might let you prep my wife for veneers after I see you do the work right. on somebody else. That's true. That's true. Okay. Uh, but but that's not how most of us learn. That's not how we we say that. That is how you learn. But when you started off, did you go did you go take that's a huge continuum learn. before you did yeah. a veneer case? Yeah. Oh, you come, really? No, yeah, I went to LVI. Before you did any veneers though? No, I took my first patient there. You didn't mess some up first? I took my patient there. You did So you didn't mess any cases up uh-uh. before? Okay, I'm impressed. Did you mess any cases up? I have I to did. say, I that made some I, mistakes. I, was, see, I made I some mistakes. A, I went to a GPR after. Well, dental I know, school, I know, but, but that's you where didn't. I my first veneer case. But you didn't know how to do it all. I guess is what I'm saying. You didn't go yeah, to like I, spend fifty thousand bucks to learn how to treatment plan no. those, you those have to, cases. We live in the world of the Google and the YouTube. Yeah. You don't even have to spend fifty. You don't have to spend one dollar. I'm saying, put some effort in 
to show me that you're learning between 5 p.m. and 8 a.m. how to do stuff. Okay, I'm with okay? you. That's another My thing My patients are not your that. guinea pigs. Yes, okay. Like it's, okay. It's, it's, it's the mindset. It's not that you're saying it's got to be this, this, this. It's just that show me that you're willing to learn, and, or, and or then we'll you, start you've moving You've done that a case. Direction. Show me, Dude, where's your, the, show whole, me the before and show after. Show me the before and after. Here's the okay. thing. is What okay. you're saying is the, whole, is the whole mentality about our podcast and about mm-hmm. what you're saying is that you're trying to take yeah. it to the next level. Yeah, sure. We are trying to encourage people to go out and read journals. Yeah, we're fans of what you're saying. It's just that we're trying to think about how do you... How do you get somebody to that point? Because that's the challenging thing. It's like it's you're saying you want that, but on a day-to-day basis, that patient comes in for that veneer case, and you go, at what point are they ready then? At what point do you say they're ready to start doing that? That's a challenge. I would think that'd be a challenge. Age-old question, okay? So here, in a perfect world, here's my mindset. Number one, what kind of patient is it? This mm. is, see, it's not black and white. It's gray. Yeah. Okay. Number one, if your wife came in, no, no offense, she looks like she might be a little bit particular about how her teeth look. Okay, that's not somebody for my associate to do. Okay, gotcha. gotcha. Yeah, you're okay. not touching my wife. No, no, yeah. no but you, yeah. you see I what I'm saying? I know what you mean. I know right. what you mean. Okay, but let's say somebody comes in, they're not super particular. They start with fangled up teeth, like no, we, uh, anything, anything, values. anything's better anything's than Anything's this. better than what yeah. the hell you started with. Yeah. That's a good case for you to start on. Gotcha. Okay, right. gotcha. All right. So see, the other thing people I think that young dentists don't understand is they don't understand that they don't have that ability. And because I've made mistakes where I've had patients where I've done their work, given them money back, and they still haunt me to this day. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And you never do that again, correct? Oh, yeah. That man. sucks. How many times have we heard Gary Wood talk about oh, that? Oh, yeah. Dude? Never yeah. make them so happy. Never make them happy. Never. So what, there's there's this ability that you come with from doing cases yeah. and having time where you can just look at somebody and say, you know, I don't want to work yeah, on you. Yeah, don't touch that. No, yeah. there's no chance. And there is there, that, that for somebody graduating school, and, and it's no fault of their own, they, they that doesn't exist in no, their head. No. All they see are teeth. Right. Okay? Right. I can do something about that. I can that. do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, who, so let me ask you: Who pays for that? Who pays for the education? So you're saying you want them to get the education? I'm not going to pay for it. So they're going to pay. They well, need I'm to pay. a unique situation. I have free classes upstairs because I do my own training. Correct. So my my training centers. Okay, but my, say it's somebody that doesn't have that. Why what would I you advocate? You would advocate that they would spend that spend that money on their on their own to go out to say LVI or Spear or whatever. Did I pay for the dental school? Gotcha. So I'm just wanting to know what you think about it. I'm I'm supposed to. So now I'm supposed to give you a job, pay you a guaranteed salary, pay you a percentage, and I'm supposed to pay for your education. Should I come wipe your ass too? But that's what these millennials want. I got. I I get where you're coming from, man. I'm a believer. We've had this discussion. I've I've told my associate. I've said, God, look, man. I love you, Listen, but you got to show me. If you me, can't afford it, stop right. going out to drink. So, That's so, exactly yeah. Okay, so yeah. person, yeah. Yeah. so here's yeah. the first thing. Yeah. So so much money. Yeah. Yeah. Get a new phone here. Okay, right, right, we right, all right, right. Yes. Right. Yeah, but go out my to first seminar, question man. to somebody is, what, when's the last time you went out to eat? Mm. And, and what oh, I love yeah. asking oh, all yeah. you guys, you Americans are unbelievable. I ask you guys, what do you... What do you <laughs> no. Right, man, you're American. No, I'm still so Indian. Listen, you'll see anywhere I go, I drink water. Yeah. Because it's free. Yeah. Okay, and even at this point where I make a lot of money, it's still free. That's why I drink coffee, man. It's just colored with stuff water. It's five dollars, dude. That stuff is (laughs) garbage. No, we made that. We (laughs) made that. Anyway, but I got what you're saying. So, so So my question is, I don't, I don't drink out. Because drinks are unbelievably expensive out. Right. Okay, so so when you say to me you don't have money to spend, you just have don't have the value right. of where I your agree. money should money go. Money management True. skills. Okay, True. right? So so ultimately, so at the end of the day, listen. So if you if you have an associate that you really believe in and that what really holds them back is money, maybe you help them out. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. hey, I'll front you the money. Right. You got to pay me back. I'll yeah. self-finance well, you. Now, wait a minute. Okay. Now, now wait okay. a minute now. Well, I'm going to kind of be a little yeah, devil's sure. advocate. Sorry. Is that you just said that you made a twenty-five thousand dollar risk on, on your on your assistant. on your assistant? Yeah, but she's. Okay. Been, I didn't do that the day I hired her. It's true. Okay, but you're yeah. saying if somebody was motivated, I wouldn't do that on the day I hired somebody. Right. No way in hell. But if you were, why would I? Okay, so back to this. Okay, yeah, yeah. how often have you have we in dentistry thought about you know what? Let's bring somebody in from the outside and promote them to this high level job when you're just letting your poor person who's been who's been unbelievably loyal. Faithful, oh, sucks, worked man. hard they, with yeah, you. Yeah, that's, okay. bad. that's bad. And, and you, so now you bring somebody in. And let the, because I did this members, last year. I brought somebody in as a sleep champion last year, and then nine months in, she left. Uh, oh man, right? Yeah. And then you got to hold a list. So you got to yeah. prove yourself. Yeah. So at the end of the day, what's wrong in that? Nothing's, nothing's wrong. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing's wrong. I'm saying there's no ceiling the in anything don't in life. Get but it. the problem but is, nobody it's... gets it. At the end of the day, we don't get it I either. True, I true. Okay, because yeah. we, we want to blame them all the time. It's easy to do. Right. Just like my dad's generation. My dad's generation. My dad's to this day looks at me and says, "I'm lazy." 
Mm. Right. Okay, mm-hmm. because I didn't work seven hours, seven days a week, twenty four yes. hours a day. So, so. I didn't clean rooms, punch toilets, week, you know, all right, of that. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, so every generation has that same same right. way they we look at the generation behind us. Like the world's gonna go to hell in a handbasket. Right. I'm gonna use okay? a term here, and it's like I feel like, and I know John does too, is I feel like there's a lack of wannabes. Mm-hmm. Meaning, like, like for instance, like I wanna be that guy right there, and I'm willing to put the time and the effort in. Right. To be apprenticed by that person to become that. And I'm willing, you know what? You know what? It's let's say right now that we had no dental degrees. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to go out and start a business with zero dollars in our pocket. Okay. We could do it. And here's how is we're going to put the sweat equity. I'm going to show up and I say, you know what? I want to be an insurance salesman. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say, look, I have $300,000 in loans. Right. But here's the thing. I'll sweep your carpet. I'll sweep your floors. Mm-hmm. I just want to hang around this place. How many How many like like rags to riches stories do you hear about sure. people that are yeah, billionaires? Yeah, but that's far and few between. Okay? Well, but I'm just saying the mentality of that is a mm-hmm. wannabe. Yeah. Like if somebody yeah. came into you and said, I want to be. It's the American dream. Yeah, it's the American it dream. Is. And it can happen. Yeah. And, I, it and does, as much still. as we say, as much as you say that the generational thing is a farce, it's not all a farce because there is no, something some to val- that. There's some there is something to, to that where you kind of go, there's this lack of respect of the time that it takes to get to that point. As we were talking to Justin about yesterday, we are like, well, hey, you know, it is hard. But, but listen, it is hard. Day, it's not supposed so to be easy. So I went through this when I first started speaking, okay? I had people that were like, I've been speaking for 20 years. You, you need to put your time in. And I was like, the hell if I need to put my time in. I'll just shorten that timeline. Okay? Mm. So I need mm. to put my time in. But and so what took you 10 years, I can do in three years. Okay? So, so certainly we can shorten our timeline because technology, the availability of information, sure. having seen somebody do it before you. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay? There's some Those things, things that make it easier. You, make it easier, okay? Yeah. So you can, you can shorten that timeline, okay? But the work still goes in. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. The steps are still there. They're just done in a faster manner than this. Instead of this long, you just do that many steps in this long. So when you get to that point, though, where... If the associate says it's time, I want to learn this, and you they put in that time, and you and you might you might even help them financially. But sure. the point is, is that they've got to prove each step along the way, and then eventually you'd love for them to be able to do what you're doing. Of course, just, I want to always replace myself. Yeah, yeah. But but I want you to define they put in the time. Have they simply showed up from eight to five for a year? That's not putting in that's the not, time. That's not taking it to the next level. Have they watched me do procedures? Do they come in on their Monday off? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Are they? Who are they? Who are they? I once had an associate said, "Can you schedule that case on a Tuesday through Friday when I'm here?" I'm like, "Nope. I'm going to schedule it on a Monday. You can come in on your day off." Mm, yeah. And it's got to be. That's what they've got to be willing to do is come in and learn. If you want to be successful around me, John, at least. we take time off. We take a day off work, and how much production do we lose? Right. Right, you know? lose it. Yeah. We lose it. You, we're you we're not asking six, that guy to lose production. You're yeah. just asking him to come in right, on his to day to come off. in and learn because that's a free CE course is what that is. At the end of the day, yeah. yeah it's a free why, why, CE course. So my question is why would you – so to me it's, there's a level of arrogance, uh, okay? There's the word. Yeah. Okay? There's a level of arrogance not in the way you act, okay, right. but in your mindset that you feel that I've learned so much so already – Oh, okay, and my, especially my friends out of GPR residencies, they really feel that, okay? <laughs> right? So they, there's level of arrogance that I don't need to learn, mm. okay? And what I'm saying is that mentality, at least with me, will never work. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Like, to this day, if I, so look, I work, I see patients three days a week, almost 40 weekends a year, I'm working Thursday, Friday, Saturday, okay? So, but there, there are a few Thursdays and Fridays I'm at the office, okay? I'm not out of town, I'm off, okay? Yeah, Let's yeah. call it. I'm in the office on Thursday, okay? And on that Friday, I'll go to my periodontist office, my oral surgeon's office, my endodontist office, because I'm there to learn, mm-hmm. yep. okay? Because I can always get better. Of course. Okay, there's always something new for me to learn. That's good. So, so, so my question is, is why, why? And, and that's goes back to my point. It, they'll use, well, I don't have money for CE. Great. We have an oral surgeon that'll do anything I ask. I have a periodontist that'll do anything I ask. I have an endodontist that'll do anything I ask. And I have an orthodontist that'll do almost anything I ask. Yep. Okay. So if you want to go learn and you don't have the money, I will make, I will personally call them. Yeah. Okay. And set up a time for you to go shadow them. Yeah. And watch what them. more can I do? Right. Like I said, you want me to wipe your butt too? Right. It's free. So if you can't call them for me, like if you call and just say my name, right? They they will understand what you're calling about. Right. So be willing. If you're so, not but willing you want to guinea pig my patients. So what you're saying then is like, and I and I caught your body language on this is that he's saying, and what you what I caught from you is that it's not a lack of mentors. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. a lack of apprentices. Right. 
who are willing, a mindset want, apprentices, mindset right, apprentices. who have that mindset, that wanna be mindset. Yeah. that they, are okay with. They want to be back. fed on their terms, their time, their conditions, right, right. at their timeline. Right. So how okay? do you tap into somebody like okay? Let's well, here's say, the good news: I don't own multiple offices. I don't need but one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. So I just need to find the right one. Right. Exactly. So let's just talk a little bit about like from a standpoint of like if you've got a we've got somebody here like ourself like myself I don't have an associate you have an associate mm-hmm. and if we're going to interview somebody and you you said you haven't figured this out yet okay there's a lot I haven't are, figured out are, <laughs> are there personality tests that have been you know like there's certain did com- you hey did he put you through a personality test before you guys dated and got married there's a personality <laughs> test called the gut yeah that's true yeah that's okay? true because I can fake anything that's true. Sure. Okay, was he nice? Like, my wife tells me all the time, okay, when I met you, your your apartment was clean. You had a housekeeper. You had a car washed every week. Then we got married, and what the hell happened to you? <laughs> okay? Right. So, the real so you came the, out. The, the, there's a value to these personality tests, but what I'm saying is, at the end of the day, the value is what you feel. Yeah. Okay, and you'll be wrong sometimes. You'll be right, right sometimes, but you can't test people to death. Yeah. That's true. You're going to lose more good people than the bad people you avoid. Yeah. Right. So, okay. so is there any skill set test then, or is it just coming in and start to work? If you feel like, hey, this guy's got to, you know, you hear a lot of people say, hire for personality, train for skill. Mm-hmm. Is is like we hire this person's got a good communication base because it's hard to teach communication. That's it's, another thing that associates don't. Uh, mil- uh, young dentists. I want to stop using the word millennial. Yeah, I agree. Okay. I agree. Yeah. Young dentists. Nice. Young dentists. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they don't. They don't believe in. They don't put any effort and time into learning how to get patients to say yes. Right, I agree Very with true. that. We talked about that. that yeah, all like day. we talk about, yeah. you know, some people like body language, body and just language. Learn, learning the way, learning the communication skills, and reading books. And I mean, these are things that well, you go back to what you were saying too. I'm sorry, I interrupted no, you. No, no, I understand. But I mean, like, is that is that harder to teach than a skill set? Mm-hmm. So, like, you you meet somebody and you hit it off, and you're like, Man, I feel like this guy's a pretty nice guy, or or whatever. We seem to like hit it off, and and then, like, at what point? I mean, like. And you're like, I'm done with this guy. All right, so let's look at it this way. So let's let's reverse engineer the question. Okay? Now, and, and let me throw this in there. If 50% of people in dental school, and I don't want to be sexist because we have a lot of women listeners. And, I like the women listeners. And I, and I do too. I'm just saying. And I do. My wife is a cl- practicing clinician. And so the thing is, is that if we if we have that many women that are coming into the dental field, 50%, is that, I think that's an advantage for them to be a one, a business owner, but not only that, is that a woman a woman wants to have children, they want to have a family, and why would they not want Bring to- back the 1950s. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> they want to work part time. Right. It seems like that could be a good a good fit That's for what fit. for the type of business that you're talking about. Some you know? Maybe. Maybe, yeah, maybe. Know. It's hard to say that. Right. So then, like if you look at this, it's like It my, should be. The it base, be, the basis theory. of my question is is that is it harder and it to train for personality or is it hard or communication or skill and or this about the same and then at what point do you say man i'm just done with this yeah, yeah. okay so <clears throat> let's reverse engineer the question okay okay so let me let me put it this way let's pretend let me go back 15 years and i want to go apply for a job okay i want to present myself as the best associate possible so what I the first thing I ask people is when I'm interviewing them straight out of school I say so tell me what it, what it, kind of things have you been reading, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay non dental books I already tell you they're not they don't love dentistry, okay have you met students here while you've been here mm-hmm, sure I met like ten or twelve students here mm-hmm. okay those are the kind of people I'm looking for okay my next thing is do you, can you show me any examples of your work well you didn't have a camera what you guys didn't have X rays either you didn't have a phone that you couldn't take pictures of your X ray with that it's right. a portfolio. Yeah, yeah at the end it's of the a day. portfolio. So, like, when you when you meet artists, how do you know how good portfolio. the artists are? Portfolio. Right. Start of doing that now yeah. if so, you want to sell yourself in the end. At the end of the day, the whole the life is about selling yourself. Yeah. Right. Whether it's to patients, you know, why did you want to interview me? Somehow, I've sold myself that you. I'm someone how, that you want to interview. Let me just say right now, how John and I got together is like this. It's yeah. like, hey man, check this case. At a bar out. at night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, late at night. Late at night yeah. in Sweden. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was, it was yeah. interesting. But I mean, like, it's you show me a case, I'll show you a case, and right. eventually you're like, okay, this guy really knows what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you, and, but that's you. You feel that passion when you talk to somebody. When it comes up quickly, you're like, hey man, so what do you learn? You know, what do you read? And like you yeah. say, would you see that article in last week's or Would last you let Justin Mooney do an implant in one of your patients? 
Yeah, yeah. From what, from and what you've never I've, seen his work, what, right? Never seen his work, and word. you never met him, really, right? Right. Yeah. right. But, you, but he's gained, but, you know, that, but he's gained that trust because right. he's from shown what, you from examples. What we have, yeah, right. exactly. Right. From and, what we and, know. and you just have it's the discussion. It's his portfolio of work. Right. It's a, it's his it's his, his book of business. So when you talk to somebody and you you're talking them in the interview and you and you say those kinds of things, you look at you. What would I want myself to have done? Intangibles. Yeah. How are you performing? How are you performing right now? And how are you going to know you're successful? And what's what's the measure of success? So so you. You're coming out of school, one year out of school, two years out of school. You left a, a big office or another office. Let's say, so what have you done in the last two years? Tell me, but what do you read? What do you do from 5 p.m. to 8 a.m.? Mm. Mm-hmm. What do you do from? What do you do on Saturdays and Sundays? Yep. Okay. To me, the measure of a person that wants to be great at what they do at some point in their life is what they do outside of work. Very true. Okay, you can drink all you want. You can do all those things, but tell me that you're reading. Tell me that you're learning, because all those things are free. Okay, we live in the day and age of education is essentially free. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you can learn anything on the Google, anything on the YouTube, anything on the Facebook, anything on the Twitter, anything you want on podcasts. Yeah. At the end of the day, podcasts are free education, right? So if you can't show me that you've invested time in that, it just right. tells me. You're probably me, not the right for person me, for me. Yeah. Okay, now if I had 100 offices, I'm just looking for a heartbeat. Right, right. Okay, can you do dentistry? Okay, but what I'm looking for is something different, and 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 my wife tells me that's my problem is that I want somebody very good when I'm trying to put somebody in a spot just to fill a, in a sense, plug a hole. I go, but my mentality just simply won't let me because I want more for that person because I want the, because if okay, you're trying to replicate yourself. Yeah. No, I'm not well, uh, because I, I don't I don't want anybody to be like. But you're me. not going to tolerate somebody though who's yes. going to just clock can, in, clock out. Yes, that's not going to happen problem. in your that's practice. Yeah, but, yeah. Or no, but no. I can tolerate it. If they up front say, listen, I'm happy doing fillings and crowns. Right, right. I want I want to serve your practice. I want to have a good life. I don't I don't ever want to do more than that. And, I, and no one's ever going to say that. I don't so think. So I've had people tell me You've that. You've had people tell you that. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I've had people tell me that. Huh. Well, and so that could work in, yeah. in this situation. Yeah, but, but that person's ra- honest you, with themselves. But do you really want that person? Yes. Why not? Because don't you want to have that relationship with them that's like they're challenging, you're challenging them, they're challenging because you, isn't this he, a good thing? Remember what he said? He's like, he's all about what he wants. Well, you're right. right? But I mean, I, gosh, see, I that would be tough wrong. for you. I would think for you, though, that would be hard to deal with that person day no, to day if they on, don't sure, want that. But the, but the, as long as they want to get better at fillings and crowns, great. As long as they're wanting to get better. If, Even if it's just at that, well, you're good with exactly that. that's exactly what you want. Show me your portfolio. Oh, yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah. And, and that's all really I want to do. Right. And I really want to get better. And I know my yeah. bonding. I want to be the and best crown that, in the world. That, yeah. Okay. Sweet. Okay. What's Sweet. wrong with that? Nothing's wrong with that. No, yeah, no, no. But I didn't know that's what you were saying. See, to me, it's it's... So ultimately what happens is a rising tide, all these fancy sayings, rising tide lifts all boats, whatever it is, okay? Ultimately what that means is that when you have somebody good around you that can take things off your chest, off your plate, now you can fill your plate with other things. Mm-hmm. Okay, you can fill it with something else. Okay, and and I've always had that mentality that if something were to happen tomorrow, I would find a way to survive. Okay, and I would I could reinvent myself. I could do something different, and um, so ultimately, I, my practice is no different than that. I, I want to do that. And another thing we didn't talk about is medical billing. Mm-hmm. That's just free revenue. Because the reimbursements are better, or we're doing like how many? Do you guys take out teeth in your practice? Sure. sure. Okay. Yeah. Do you see those patients for post op sometimes? Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah I mean, sometimes. sometimes. Sutures or whatever, or maybe whatever. Well, you just, yeah. Oh yeah, it's no big deal, right? Yeah. yeah it only costs you fifty dollars every time you see them. Chair time. It's all right. Chair time. It is chair time. Uh, oh yeah, no big deal. Right. I just here's fifty dollars. Let me give you fifty dollars. Don't come in. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, why, why do we have such a nonchalant attitude about it? Mm. That's right, we do. You're, you're so, because medicine does it. Your assistant, Every single your, time you go to the doctor, your, they charge Your assistant room. had to tear down that room, yeah. set it up, I spray it day. down. I said every time your front office person bucks. had to pick up the phone and confirm that appointment. You're right. Okay, that person had to make the appointment, and there's a percentage of patients you have to reschedule because they can't make that appointment and the long is good for them. Yeah, definitely okay. costs you money. It costs you money. Yeah. So why in the hell is it okay just to do it for free? It's not. Okay, so then get paid not, for it. It's not what you do. It's, what, it's not what it. you do. It's what you know. Get paid for it. I Medical agree. insurance will pay for those visits. For a post-op. Yeah. It's an, it's an office visit. 
When's the last time you so, went to the doctor's so office instance, and didn't think, get charged yeah, for an office visit? To be honest visit? with you, I've been thinking about this. It's a little sidebar, but it's like a procedure that John and I have incorporated. We've been trying to cheat a little more TMD and all that kind of thing. We've been doing some anterior discluding devices. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it's an assistant. Those, t- th- those are, oh God, those are medically exactly. payable procedures. Yeah, well, so, I just, I just goofing around the cup. So the thing is, is that you charge, you know, the, you know, it's the whole thing is assistant driven. Yeah. You know, I've yeah. got to the point now where I've trained my assistants, and it's like I just walk in a room, and it's like, hey, how you feeling? Touch a few muscles, and I'm out. But why right. are you building that to medical? And no, I'm not. Why not? And I, and, well, I need to be because. But why and, not? And, I just don't know how. Because I don't know how. Don't know how. So, so you don't have access to the YouTube or the Google? I do, but you I have. You don't have a few thousand to dollars to go learn something. I'm a, I'm available. That's maybe me. that's the next okay. step. No, maybe, but, maybe that's but the my next question step. is: is why are we not doing that? So so we want to complain about the young dentist not doing it, but yet we do it ourselves. Sure. Sure. That's right. It's, you're it's right. The next, it's the next step. I'm just asking. Too shame, man. So then the day, I mean, the same thing, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm, we're, I'm guilty of it. You're guilty of it. You're guilty of it, right? Is but it yet we want to be. But we it's did. okay for us to bitch about them being like that. But yet it's not okay for us to be like right. that. If we're not pushing it to the next level on what we're doing. So, so at the end of the day, well, how can you expect anybody around you to be any different if you yourself aren't constantly pushing? So what sure. my team will say about me is that listen, I'm difficult to get along with sometimes, but I'm constantly pushing. Yeah. Trying okay, to I'm get better. Yeah, constantly. If we if we if we if if we have no movement, we're dying. Very so my true. question is: this, So you don't want to get paid? So you don't think you could sell more if you if medical insurance paid for it for yeah, your man. patients? Thank oh my you so goodness! Yeah. Oh, I know. So then, why aren't you learning? So you like? I know. I know you like doing fillings and crowns. They're so fun. No, I don't. Well, I'm, and I'm learning about the, the the apnea device with medical billing. That's something. So you're treating but, TMD. You better be treating sleep apnea. You right. Right. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. 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 That's yeah. what we. Yeah. That's one of the reasons changed our whole world when yeah. we went out yeah. to, and took that course yeah. of occlusion and and now we're, we're, we're taking ready to take the sleep a workshop course. In, and, uh, in yeah, yeah. Spear, That's what we're doing this summer. Yeah. So yeah. with uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin and, uh, and, and uh, yeah. Jameson Spencer. Yeah, so my, here's my question on that. Uh, so are you medical billing that? Yes. Well, yes. That's uh, for what, for the appliances, yes, but not for office visits. That's that's okay. something that so I don't know enough about. Uh, I like giving it away for free. Yeah, okay. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, did, I gave it away free for 15 years. I mean, I might as well get 18 to 20 dollars for it. Absolutely. So right? I've got to learn about. Well, do you that. ever see patients that need profies more than twice a year? Yeah. Sure do. So what yeah. what happens in that exam you do on them the third or fourth time? If it's insurance, it goes away. If it's free, right? Yeah. yeah. Why don't you just bill medical for that? Hmm. And you've had excellent success with that, it sounds like. Exams are about 80% success. Are you Mm. kidding me? Mm. Wow. Deductibles and co-pays will will enter into that equation. Sure. So where did you learn about it? Uh, So I I learned from, I've taken classes from uh, Dr. Z in Chicago, Hutan Shahidi, um, and and Chris Ferrugia, all these friends of mine. Yeah, yeah. And then so I brought Hutan in and we we teach medical billing training. And again, for me, what's different is, is again, the education you can get on the YouTube and the Google. It's about the implementation of the workflow. It's about team integration. Yeah. At the end of the day, my, listen, nothing I do is about the education part of it. There are so much smarter people that are better than me at that, okay? So learn from them on the Google, the YouTube, wherever it is. But if you want to learn about team integration and getting your team on board and creating a workflow that makes sense in a busy general practice, that's where we can really help people. Gotcha. So, um, But I would tell you that if you want to do more sleep, we do medical billing, mm-hmm. okay? And here's what I'll tell you, and I'll say this honestly, is that you're not as good at medical billing as you need to be mm-hmm. because you're not doing it enough, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. So, so like, when you get really good at medical billing, you, you'll be able to have a patient in the hygiene chair, and before they leave the hygiene chair, you can tell them how much their out-of-pocket's going to be for that sleep appliance. That's awesome. That's I'd awesome. love to be able to do well, that. Okay. I'm so, not there. So, then you're not telling, there. so, so you're, what you're saying to me is that you do medical billing. Like, yeah, I do medical billing, but you do it at such a low level Okay, Sounds, your, your yes. bar is Sounds so low. Like, yes. yeah. Okay, your bar is so yeah. low that you like you, you you. They walk out not knowing what it's going to okay, pay. So I'm not trying to be mean here, but no, no. egotistically, I've take I've I learned I learned medical billing enough, but you never had somebody show you what's possible. Yeah. Okay. So who do we need to talk? Who 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 can teach that? I can. You can. Yeah. That's your yeah. thing. That's well. That's one, one of, of my your things. things. One, one of my things. things. So how do you do that? Do you do you have classes? At yeah, we your have classes place? in Raleigh. We're doing some on the road this year. Okay. Like Houston. Boise. Where can we go? To, where can we go? 3D if people are listening. 3D dash dentist or tbonespeaks.com. Okay. Okay. It'll, it'll take you there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, but we ask me more questions. I'm not here to promote my stuff. I mean, at the end of the day, we fill them well, up. It's no big deal. But this is what, I mean, we both mm-hmm. want to go and but check I this cha- out. But it's about the disruption, correct? Yeah. So, oh, I've so had you've dis- already disrupted us. Yeah, it's good yeah. disruption. Yeah, yeah. but because we talk about this all the time about what do we, what would we like to do? We talked about this so much about what we, where we want to be in 20 years. How do we get to that point? And this is a this is a model that could get to where you want to be in twenty years. It's just it's interesting. But how can you let yourself never stop growing? Yeah, yeah. 
You've got you can't because like you say you're dying if you're not growing. I mean right. at some so point. How, how can you not say there must be more in medical ability? Like I take classes myself sometimes and I go to them like oh, I'm doing this already. It makes me feel at ease. Yeah. All right. I'm yeah. I'm at the I'm at a good level. Yeah. Okay. So that's my question is, is I guess what you just don't know what the highest level what's is. The that's the, the what's thing. What's the worst thing that happens if I go to a C and don't like it? I've wasted money and time. Right. But it makes you confirm that you're doing the right thing. That's the worst basically. thing that happens. Yeah. So, so you you tell me that you've we've become so money minded that we can't spend a few thousand dollars to figure out that we're doing it right. Sure. No, I'm all. We're no, all about, we're that. All about that. I know. Yeah. I get that. But yeah. I'm just saying, generally speaking, yeah. Most people aren't. Most, Most people, people aren't. They're right? like, I'm good yeah. enough. Yeah. And that's, so you know and what? I don't need to spend any you know more what? money. Thank then you don't bitch about anything. Right. That's why that stat is that most dentists spend nine hundred dollars yeah. on education and travel yearly. Yearly. And that's that's from the office to the the county dental society. That's meeting. exactly right. Yeah. Yep. That's what and then saying. it's online, and like you say, the YouTube and the Google are good. On one hand, they've also been bad yeah, because they they people go, oh, I got that now. I got it. I saw a video on it. So now it I'm doesn't on. work. I tried it in my practice. It doesn't work. You know, right. you know what I hear about medical billing the most often is I tried it in my practice. It didn't work. I go, what'd you try it on? Oh, you know, I had this patient that came in that had a hybrid. We did, you know, took all the teeth out and gave him dentures. We billed that to medical and they didn't pay for it. I'm like, yep, it's never going to work. Yeah, that's not what it's for. That's well, that's one for. of the things it's for, but that the percentage of that pain right. is so, so low. low. Yeah, it's yeah. so yeah. low. Yeah. And then my next question is, oh, medical billing didn't work. How long did you try it for? How many claims do you file? So you're telling me that you went to dental school and the first time you did a prep, you became a master at it. Right. You're not there yet. You got to keep, set. gotta keep working yeah, it's on not, it. Just it's skill a, set. And, but more importantly, see the other thing that I find, and this is how I did medical billing. And I'm not advocating this is how people have to do it. Okay, but again, this is how. So I believe when you when you want to implement something, you got to go full bore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so when I did medical billing, I said, you know what, I'm going to hire a medical biller. Mm. I, I hired Melissa. I said, Melissa, here's the deal. We got six months to make you worth it. Mm. All right, I'm going to front your salary for six months. So this is somebody that knew medical billing she was, already. She, she was a medical biller, okay. but she didn't know dental medical billing. Gotcha. Okay. okay. I'm going to front your salary for six months. I'm committed to making this happen. Let's go to some education. Let's see what it takes. Yeah. Let's work on it. The, your sole job, all you got to do is this. To make yeah. your salary profitable. So how long did it take you to get that fully implemented and trained in uh, your practice? 18 months. 18 Six, months. Uh, 12 now, to 18 months. Now, now that what you know. Now, my yeah. level of implementation is higher than what okay. you guys even yeah, imagine. Yeah, yeah, but right. if we went to, if your, we went course, to your course, what are you telling people so at I your course? So how long the, will it take I, them? I tell everybody that it takes three to six months for you to see a return. Okay. 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 So that's you have not, to be willing to front some money. Mm -hmm. yeah, and do you, do you recommend they hire somebody? Depends on their workload. Because most people don't have the business mindset or the financial mindset that I have. Okay. So if you, if I, if I met you guys, okay, I would say for you to hire somebody part-time. Gotcha. A dedicated person. Okay, they can be a remote employee even. And you give it three to six months, you take them to training, yeah. and then you give it three you, to six but, months. But you set it up front. Listen, these are my expectations. I'm right. going to hire you. Right. Like, I, I interviewed somebody the other day to come to our office, and she's working somewhere else, I, you know, in another field, okay? And I said to her, I said, so I want to be upfront with you. I like you, okay? And I want to hire you, but I want you to know this. You take this job, and in three months from now, I don't, we don't, it doesn't work for each other. Are you going to be okay with that? Don't leave your job that you have now that pays you well. I like the upfront okay? mentality. And, yeah. and come to my place, and, and yeah. I'm telling you, it's a three month deal. I agree. Yeah. Okay? I think it's the way you got to After three months, people. after three months, if it works for us, we'll keep you. Yeah, it's, okay? it's business. Yeah, it's a business. It's a business. Yeah. So no, but it's also the right human thing well, to I do, agree right? With that too. Yeah, you don't want somebody to be like, failing and it's look, not working. I tell them, listen, I don't want to take you out of your situation and put you on the street, right. Because I got a whim. Right. Okay, and my whim changed. Right. Okay, and now suddenly you left a good job and you can't go back. Right. So after three to six months, just to kind of get to yeah. the, the brass tacks on that, you feel like things like that extra exam mm -hmm. per year. You feel like, of course, apnea appliances. We, 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 um, we collected $40,000 last month in medical billing. Wow. In January. So as a percentage, like you're talking about an, an extra 10, 15 percent that you could year, do? Last year, 2015, we collected north of $200,000 in medical billing. Wow. Wow. And how much of that was sleep versus so other sleep, stuff? Yeah, sleep would be 50% of that. Okay. okay. But that's still, good. I mean, that's, that's $100,000 that's, mm -hmm. that's not even sleep. Mm -hmm. That's, that's and, impressive. And the thing about that's sleep. exams and x-rays. Yeah. Wow. So I want to go back to one more thing on the medical billing part, okay? So the, there's there are three ways you can do it, okay? One, you can try to have a, t a current team member do it. Okay. A little bit of a recipe for toughness, okay? Yeah, yeah. Unless you, unless you carve out time for them. Yeah. Okay, so the way I would approach that, I would say Susie Q. 
okay, because ninety percent of them are women. Okay, uh, Friday's your day off. I'm gonna. I want you to. Fr- I want you to put some time in on Fridays. Yep. If you prove the results, I'll give you a raise. Okay, or I'll move you into this position, whatever it takes. But I want you to carve out Fridays as this. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you try to have somebody do this, like in between everything else that you're having them do, yeah, it's a recipe. Done. It's a, just right. a recipe. It has okay? to be a dedication. Okay. Number yeah. two, you hire a full-time, part-time virtual employee that's dedicated to doing this, mm-hmm. and you front it for six months. Okay, and that person can sink or swim. Okay, or the third way of doing it is you can hire an outside billing service. Okay, and they take a percentage. Yep. Okay, okay. And, and so that's an option as well. Okay, yep. so my ultimate goal for everybody is to have an internal biller. Mm-hmm. Okay, because I believe in vertical integration. Yep. Okay, um, but I say that starting off, uh, I'm okay with uh, small, small and relatively small-minded practices outsourcing it. So if you're an under a million dollar practice, my suggestion is to outsource it. Mm-hmm. Okay, if you're if you're a million plus and you're a business, you know, entrepreneurial to a certain degree, mm-hmm. uh, I suggest that you bring in a person dedicated to doing it. Okay, um, and, and that, so that's kind of how I look at that. Mm-hmm. And so, but for that kind of return, if you're talking about even if the sleep is out of it, if you're mm-hmm. talking a hundred thousand dollar return that certainly can justify especially a part-time person's salary a hundred grand is a part-time person absolutely holy smokes man i mean that's yeah. a pretty that's a pretty good return and, and really it makes you feel better and it's better for the patient too i mean yeah, the patients so are happier as well because they're yeah. getting better care they're getting that extra exam and they're feeling good about yeah. it how many people I mean, are coming is... to you at, and, and even now because people are like there's different insurance models that are going down even now in 2017 and and they're like hey I, i've got this money can i spend it in your office right yeah. like i mean like that's crazy that right. we can't even tap into that right. but we can You're how about this is a- see how silly it is. so i'm look I, let me preface everything i say about medical insurance this way there's deductibles, there's copays, sure. these affect these things, okay? Right. There's exclusion in plans, and there's some states like Alabama, Tennessee, Michigan, places like that that just ass backwards, okay? Mm-hmm. Where medical insurance is, is a little bit tough in some of those states, yeah. okay? That's, so, that's what we've heard about in Tennessee, because we're in yeah, Tennessee. Yeah, we've so heard it's, it's really it's, tough. It's tough. Sleep, that's it's why tough. medical billing for it's me tough. with sleep is it's tough, tough, man. It's tough, okay? Yeah. So, so, see, there's the difference. Like, if you, so when people, so here, here's ultimately, like, if you sign up for my class, we get an email saying you signed up. Lori or myself would pick up the phone and say, listen, dude, you don't need to come to this class. Let's give you your money back. Because Tennessee is not, no, it's we not going to happen. Know. We just know. And I said, listen, I don't want to waste your time. I don't need your money that bad. Yeah. And that's the honesty of it, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, so, but anyway, what was I talking about? Yeah. Well, you were just saying that up oh, front that up, you got to know that right, whether yeah. it's going to work in your state, if yeah, it's going to be worth right, it. Right. If it's going to be worth it. Oh, medical main. billing. Okay. Yeah. So, do you, do you take x-rays after you do your implants? Sure. Do you get paid for those? No. Why not? I should. Could you? Sounds like you're telling me I can't. Sounds like with medical, you might be able to. If I say I. See, the, you said two different things there, okay? You said I can, you said it might be possible. I like your answer better. Okay? okay? That's setting up realistic expectations. Okay? It's possible. Okay? You can submit the claim. How long does it cost? What does it cost? And how long does it take to submit the claim? 30 seconds. Mm. Okay? And it may pay. Mm. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. Yeah. You were doing it for free anyway. Yeah. And it's not a lot of time for a no. potential return. Right. Exactly. Mm. So to give you examples, uh, and I, again, I can only give you based on the state of North Carolina, we Blue Cross Blue Shield and network provider, uh, we get paid roughly 100 our, our allowable fee is $180 for a new patient exam through medical insurance, uh, like $40 through dental insurance. Wow. Wow. So you're doing new patient exams. Do you're medical. billing it through medical. We try, uh, our first, our, pr- our first. primary there is medical, secondary is dental. Okay. Okay. And again, subject to the deductibles yeah, and the allowables yeah, and, and all, all that. that stuff. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but a lot of times uh, when we're in network, uh, uh, the deductibles don't apply to diagnostic or exams. Okay. Okay. okay, only sometimes. procedures. So, sometimes. Every plan, again, like depends say, how much your employee pays. This is why you go to the course, yeah, well, because not, you don't know even necessarily. That, I, couldn't, I couldn't even tell you. I just say you find out. It's like, yeah. like if I came to your office, who's your person that does your insurance in your office? Cindy. Cindy. So if I came to Cindy, like, uh, what city are you in? Uh it's small Give me town, a big employer in your city. Big John Deere. John Deere. If yeah. I came to Cindy and I said, hey, I'm from John Deere, like she wouldn't even need my card. She can just tell you exactly sure. what it pays, right? Sure. Okay, so the same thing happens with medical insurance. Like literally, if you come to our office and you're with the Wake County school education system, like Melissa can, out, out of the top of her head, yeah. she can say, okay, this is She knows is what your the, percentages and knows. all that. She just yeah. knows. The medical insurance even. Yeah. So the same thing happens. Okay, but that doesn't happen when you dabble in it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, when you do a medical claim every once in a while, yeah. it doesn't you gotta happen. You got to own it. You, you got to own it. it. You got to become a champion. You got to be a leader in it. Okay. Okay. Well, that's where that's where I feel like that's a challenge for us to start to look at that. And I yeah. think for a lot of our listeners, because it's something that 
we've talked about a little bit with sleep, yeah. but we, was I was not even aware of the extent that you can get into yeah. the medical. And again, but the shame on you guys for not getting education. Now you're right, man. The shame on you guys are going to listen to these old people talk. I know, going to too many of these these big meetings <laughs> with these old people. I'm right. be, look, I'm dead dead serious. At the end of the day, what I look for in education is when I want technical education, I'm okay with the older sure. vanguard you know, generation. Okay, mm-hmm. because they, they're a lot like Frank Spear. At the end yeah, of the day, he's right. been around a long time, but the guys on believable yeah, okay yeah, right. john coyce a lot of these right, guys okay right, right but when i want practice advice I, i'm no offense i'm not going to spear for that mm-hmm, I mean, mm-hmm. the, the guy doesn't practice in my the traditional real dentistry right, okay? right. it's not yeah. real world like, it's totally it's not different real world. okay yeah. so so to me you got to deal with people that are that are living it and doing it that yeah. that that don't pretend to have all the answers you got to deal with people that just are just like you at the end of the day right so um it, it's unbelievable dentistry i think we're in the best time ever I think we can do so much. I think we're creating a void that's allowing uh, DSO dentistry to thrive. Uh, not that I think there's anything wrong with that. At the end of the day, I'm a capitalist. If we can, if we as a profession can't fill that void, and we could fill it quite easily. If 5,000 of us a year hired an associate, we could fill that void. Yeah. Be- I, I agree. You know, I think that's the thing that really scares me about going forward as a, as a profession is that, one, is if we tap into something, some of the things that he's saying as a profession – then you really are helping access to care. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, because that's true. you're doing you're doing the bread and butter dentistry that most people need. Right, that most people need. And then and then also that per, you as a per, clinician can be happier doing the things you'd love. Right. You know, as an owner, you know, you're you're more entrepreneurial. Maybe you've got an associate. Yeah. Maybe they want to be. But but I think the challenge is it's with the younger dentist. It's with that Yielding understanding that that, but that it's okay. Not every associate has to be a younger dentist. Well, you're right. You're right. Okay. Right. You're right. Right. They can, be in, five, they can be that younger dentist that worked five, six years somewhere else, and now they want right. to settle down. Yeah. But it would have been hard, I think, about for me. It would have been hard for me. Not that I would, didn't want to learn, not that I didn't want to get better, but you have to really think through that mindset and go, you know what? I get what this guy's trying to say to me. He wants me to become My better. This is not the GPR residency. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And you have to just get and that nor, across. And honestly, quite honestly, nor, no practice should be a GPR residency. But that's what a lot of DSOs are. Let's be honest. Sure. They're, that's they're, their it's model. free for all, man. That's their model. I, that's, uh, I, don't, I can't say yes or no to any of that because yeah. I've never experienced it. Okay? Well, I mean, yeah, and I haven't done it myself. But, you know, you talk to people that are in that and it is that way. So that's what a lot of younger dentists coming out of school are learning is that you go in and it's a free for all, man. It's all about hit your production number. Right. And so how many wages they, do you produce? Right. So they get in and that what's mindset. what's wrong with hitting your production number? No, then nothing you wrong with make, that. You know, no. But if that's all it is and it's not about getting better it's just production numbers well, whose who's fault is that the DSOs or the practitioners absolutely it's the practitioners fault. right but at the end of the day the onus is on yourself true okay? True. you so can I, walk away with that from that job right but in medicine again they it's, call it's the a, golden handcuffs you right. know they, right. they've handcuffed me right. they've right. held me against yeah. my will just at this place yeah, yeah, but exactly. in medicine though again as a mirror to that they you know the, the older docs would say that the younger docs, they just they've been in that insurance mindset for so long. They've just that they've learned a new way, yeah. and it's hard to change that back to the model, the medical model, back before insurance did dominate everything. And I think we're in that same challenge right now. How do you take somebody who's just been told you need to, you're going to see 50 patients a day, you're going to hit a production number, and then you're going to bring them in your practice and say no, it's all about quality, and you're going to do very little in terms of procedure mix, but you're going to do very high quality, it's it's completely it's opposite. It's hard. It's yeah. hard. Yeah. It, it, so I want to, I, I see your wife's telling us we've got to get done. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. And it's time. So I, but I want to bring this full circle, okay? Because I, I want I want to give you a synopsis of what's happened in my practice in the last four years, okay? So so what people have to understand is there's, a, there's an entire story and tale to what I'm doing. Okay, and what I'm trying to get you to buy into. I'm trying to get you to buy into a lifestyle or, or a philosophy, okay? And that is, at the end of the day, I asked you, I started by, how can you take more time off? Okay, so if you didn't have to see some of the patients, if you could produce more doing less, you could produce enough to make the money that you want to make, you would take more time off. Sure. Okay. Every day. Then I asked you guys about why don't you take three or four weeks off in a row? Mm-hmm. Like, what the hell's going to happen to my practice? Who's going to watch your practice? Okay, so now by, by being able to advance yourself... Okay, and not get rid of that underneath you, but give that to somebody else. What's within your practice already? Okay, let's take what what revenue opportunities we're missing in medical billing Mm -hmm. with exams and x-rays, things that were given away for free. Let's $20 this to death. 
Okay. Then I'm trying to say, you know what? What about all those patients that walk through your practice today that have sleep apnea already? Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's give them an opportunity. Medical billing plays a big role in that. Yep. And I'm saying, what about the patients that are missing teeth? At the end of the day, how many missing teeth are in your practice? Right. You know, if you got one percent case acceptance or two percent case acceptance, you yeah. know, I mean, if you know, if I if I did a seminar and the title of it was, let me teach you to have five percent case acceptance. Right. How many people would come to that seminar? Right. I could right. teach you to have a million dollar practice on 5% case acceptance. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's if, so you re- true. if you really so just true. think about it's, it, it's okay? a lot of no's so, before but, you get to the yes, right, and that's so, okay. You know, at the end of the day, I mean, how many people did you have to ask out before your lovely wife finally said yes? Yeah. Uh, probably a lot. I mean, looking at you, a lot of people. Look at this guy. Yeah. Look at this guy. A lot. I'd ask a lot of people that said no, right? <laughs> so, you know, full circle is, is don't take, when I say stop doing fillings and crowns, it's not about literally stopping to do fillings and crowns in your practice. Yeah. Okay. There's an entire thing that goes with this. Like okay. And, 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 and I hear, like, I heard a speaker yesterday, an unbelievable respect for him. He was showing how he color codes things and how he has all these templates done. And I, I just looked at it and I said, I don't want to work that hard, that efficiently. Yeah. I, in fact, I want to be lazy. Okay, I want to chit chat with my patients. I want to have fun. Right. I want to. I want to grow my team around me. Yeah. Okay, because Liz makes more today than she ever made. Okay, Liz has a better practice lifestyle than she's ever had. Yeah. I've That's taken camaraderie. You know, that you, know, yeah. you cannot buy. Yeah. You want to do cool like, stuff. Like and I you told my hygienist fun. Megan, I said. So the last thing, and I want to, and then I promise I'll let you go because I'll just keep talking. Okay. <laughs> so, um, what does your hygienist produce per day? Thousand um, dollars. Yeah, probably about fifteen hundred. Yeah. Yeah, about a thousand dollars a day. That's what okay. we shoot for. All right, so a thousand dollars a day. Right? Well, I'm wor- we're we're doing different schedules, so I'm working okay. longer hours. Yeah, that's okay. true. So that's let's true. call it th- the average practice. They'd love to get a thousand dollars. These yeah. gurus tell you your hygienist can do two thousand. I'm like, where mm. in the hell are you doing right. this at? Yeah. Okay, right. good luck. Like, yeah. so, but four, thirty, 30, minute, 30 minute profies on yeah. everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Four thousand. Yeah. So uh, I don't believe in assisted hygiene. I don't believe in a commission structure for hygienists. I believe in one hour appointments for hygiene. There you go. Yeah, man. With it. So so my goal is a thousand dollars for hygiene. Okay, so I went to Megan and I said, Megan, listen, you know, the day's going to come that uh, I want Liz to do something else because I've already got a business model in mind that I want Liz to work, work with me on. Yeah. Uh, this is your hygienist. M- M- Liz is my sleep champion. She's okay. sleep okay. champion. My, yeah. used to be my implant champion and right. T-bone champion. Now she's sleep champion. <laughs> okay. okay. And I went to Megan, my hygienist. And, and, you know, hygienists are generally speaking one of the highest paid or higher paid people mm-hmm. in your practice. And I said, Megan, I, wanna, I want you to consider not doing hygiene anymore. Hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And and she looked at me like I was a little bit nuts, but she, you know, she trusts me and you guys are probably looking at me like I'm a little bit nuts. No, I don't think okay. so. So I said, Megan, what do you produce in a week? So a hygienist, your hygienist does $1,000 a day. Mm-hmm. You open four days a week. Yep. So they do $4,000 a week. Yep. I said, Megan, so here's your opportunity. You can see 32 patients this week or you can do two sleep appliances. Hmm. Which one do you want to do? Hmm. And then, and she said, she said, I'd love to do two patients. Love to do it. Yeah. I said, Megan, you want to work three days a week and get paid for four days a week. This is what it would look like. This is the production number I need. Mm. Okay. And you're not going to do it by doing more hygiene because I I don't want that philosophy in my practice. Right. We're not trying to just cram patients in. We're not trying to cram people in. Right. So I said, now you've got to start looking at different procedures. That can that you can do and produce that will allow allow our business to have the production from you, without you having to be here. To replace that production. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. All right, fair enough. Yeah, man. I talked too so much. Good. It's been so awesome. Good, yeah. Thank you so much for being on the show. It's yeah, been a good for show. Me on, man. It was a lot of and, fun. And, uh, you know, we'll get the. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we've been challenged a lot on the show, obviously, uh, and we're going to be talking a lot about this, I'm sure, on future shows as far as what this means for us and for our listeners. Give us some feedback. Uh, go check out what, what does uh, this mean what, for us, though. I mean, uh, you just said uh, a disruptive comment because it's, it's, we it's have to. What's your plan of action? Right. Right. What well, is our plan of action? Yeah, yeah we got it. We got to get our mind around that. Right. We're going to have to talk more about this, but I would definitely encourage you guys. You know, obviously, as you've heard from Dr. Agarwal, you know, this is somebody that is worth checking out. We do want, I know he's not here pitching this stuff, but we do want you to go check him out and, and find out how you may be able to benefit in your practice from what he is doing and learn to be a better dentist, maybe to have your practice disrupted like he just disrupted ours. You know, so. And always take it to the next level. Thanks so much for listening to T-Bone Speaks with Dr. Tarun Agarwal. Remember to keep striving for excellence and we'll catch you on the next episode.